leadership coronavirus rebuilding in Tennessee. I'm Michael Toscano. The U.S. death toll for the coronavirus now at 11 with a death near Sacramento, California. Correspondent Dan Simon tells us the man had recently been aboard the Grand Princess cruise ship. This was a 15-day voyage to the Hawaiian Islands. The cruise ship was supposed to come back to San Francisco, to the port of San Francisco on Saturday. Instead, it's coming back early and in fact will not dock at all while medical officials work to determine if anybody on board has the coronavirus. The House has passed an emergency spending bill to fight that virus. The yeas are 415, the nays are 2. It was an overwhelming margin of support. Congresswoman Nina Lowy, who heads the House Appropriations Committee, offers a peek at what's inside the bill. It provides $8.3 billion in entirely new funding to keep Americans safe. Research and development of vaccines. The bill now goes to the Senate, where Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says, I'm optimistic we can complete legislation and deliver this funding this week. Peter Benigno, Washington. The International Criminal Court of The Hague has said okay to investigating the Taliban, Afghan forces, and U.S. military and intelligence personnel for war crimes and crimes against humanity in Afghanistan. The U.S. no longer recognizes that court's jurisdiction. One person still listed as missing in tornado stricken central Tennessee this morning, the death toll 24. Mara Walker reports homes and lives now have to be rebuilt. The reality for so many people here is that they are going to have to start from scratch, and you can tell that just by looking at the sheer devastation. And it's really a surreal feeling when you look at these homes. I mean, big chunks of these homes are missing. The tops of these trees uh, have been sheared off by the sheer force of the tornado winds. RB singer R. Kelly doing federal court in Chicago today to plea on new sex abuse allegations. I'm Michael Toscano. If you're one of the millions of Americans who moves back taxes, if you get nervous when the mail comes because you might get a letter from the IRS, then you heard their enforcement agents are cracking down this year and can garnish your paycheck, levy your bank accounts, even your home or business Biggie. Also known as the Bon Appetit Rappers Keep. Would you like to ride? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you and your friends can get with my friends, would you like to ride? Mm -hmm. Funny, it was like they time. Ooh, could you turn that down?
school with no public aid rules. Right now, no problems. Rain, showers, and windy today with highs in the low 50s. Tonight, down to 31. Oh, it's currently 35. Best look at traffic and weather. I'm Jennifer Thompson. It's 607 on 1690 AM WVON. The views expressed on our programs are not necessarily those of WVON, Midway Broadcasting Corporation, or our participating sponsors. Live from the Infinity Studios at WVON. You're listening to The Morning Show with Mays Jackson on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Rise and Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Let's go, y'all. Let's go. Let's go. To be. War and poverty. What? What's up, A new way. Share that video. Share, share. Share, take a moment, share the video, like the page, do all of that good stuff. Go to the Maze Jackson page, represent. World won't get no better if we just let it be. Na 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 na. The world won't get no better. Wake up, Chicago. Wake up, world. This is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, how you feeling this morning? Welcome back, Maze. I guess you had safe travels. Hey, man, I had safe... You know what? I had more than safe travels. I had great travels. Mm -hmm. You know what, man? It. You know what? Um, I'm going to tell you, Todd. It was like... So, first of all, can I tell... You know what? I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it. Because I think that it was, I mean, man, it was, it, it was, inter, it was, it was a great return to Springfield. Let me just say that. Um, I'm, I'm, we, I'm, return the conquering hero. You know what? It's funny, but I, we're going to talk about it. I'm not going to call it that, but it was, let me just say that it was, it, it, it was a, it was a good return. Let me just say that. I mean, it, it was good to not. It was good to be able to walk upright. Now, I've never not walked 
walked upright, but I must say. There was say, a, a place of respect for you when he got there. Bam. Look, y'all. It's all right. <laughs> all right. So, look, we're going to talk about it all, though. But let me do this. Let's do this. Let's say what's up to the WVOA Morning Show team. What's up to Miss Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom? Jennifer, how are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling really good, actually. I am. All right. All right. How about you? I, you know what? I'm feeling. I am. You, you know what? No, I, I feel it's not that hot there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. You know yeah. what? I mean, every, it is it is cooler in the whole entire facility. Cause you know what? Usually I walk in the front door and I start to melt, and then yep. it's like the chocolate starts melting. You know, they used to tell jokes about me. They used to be like, "You so black, you melt. You, you, so you sweat chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you so black, you sweat chocolate." Um, I was like, "Look, man." Um, but it, it it does feel good in here. I'm I'm in a good space. I'm feeling real good, um, and I'm just you know what, man. Let me just say that, um, man. It, it what? you know what? Let's do this. Let me say what's up to the rest of the morning show team. Let me say what's up to Miss Sonia Escobar, the music conductor of the Soul Plane. How are you, Miss Escobar? Good morning. I'm feeling awesome, guys. You're feeling awesome. Well, I'm feeling awesome, Todd. You're looking like Todd. <laughs> I, I, just, fan off. I, I didn't right. sleep that well myself. Though. You didn't sleep that well. No. All right. Well, Claire well, and Janine. Janine's not. Wait. Well, first of all, hold on. So wait, wait, wait. Let me back up. Did Claire go to? Did you? Did she go to geometry yesterday? She did. And then did she then abscond and leave school? That's and, right. They called me. <laughs> and I picked her up about ten fifteen or something. Ten fifteen, and then you Maybe. all headed back. Now let me ask a question. All right, did you on the way back? Like, did you stop and get some like good food or like do you like when we 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 uh, did stop and got some uh, pancakes from? Well, she got French toast at the original House of Pancakes. Did you stay or did you go? Oh no! no, no. Matter of fact, Claire is one of the the I do not want to get out of the car generation. <laughs> I, I went in, got it, and we, we went home. Okay, she slept like all day. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. But then she and Janine slept. Janine when she got home, but she stayed late to work. She started sleeping. So somewhere, I'm guessing it was like one o'clock. They're all walking around. Waking <laughs> <up>. <laughs> hey, no respect. You know, no respect for the man of the house. Like you know, and then pro turning on lights, closing doors, squeaky doors, turning on TV. Nobody. Well, tips. Claire's still sick, so she wasn't doing that, but she was making the heck of a noise. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, poor Claire. All right. Well, look. Uh, well, you know what, hey man, at least you weren't on the plane because you know then you'd be recirculating that air to us. Oh my so God. let's do this. Let's uh, get this thing up to 50,000 feet. We are locked and loaded all the way up, up, up and away. It's the WVON Morning Show. All right, y'all. Let me tell you what. Um, so it's planes, trains, and automobiles, except for it's planes and buses. And buses and planes and um, a lot of walking around and a lot of... Hey, man, Todd. Okay, so I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you a secret. Just between me and you. All right, just between everybody in the cockpit. Okay. okay. I was a little nervous going back to Springfield. Like, I really was. So, you know, like I've been back, but like not really in the building, in the building. You know, like you skirt around the edges. You go to the... You know, you go to the to the to the convention center. You go to the, but really going into the building, it was like I really did have some a tad bit of anxiety. When you get off at Clear Lake, I was just thinking like the last time I was there, like literally, the speaker literally walked up to me and was like, "What are you doing here?" Wow. Like I was literally in the like having a beer, and him and Steve Brown walk up and they like like while I'm eating. Boy. Uh, they were having a book signing about. You're, you're, you're in the Stratton building. No, this was in a. No, I was in a, a saloon. Oh, oh, they really meant like, what are you doing here in Springfield? In Springfield, oh. <laughs> like in the town, like yeah. you're banished from the land. It's right. like, wait, what? You are banished. Like, da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. and you know, I was looking like, hold on, homie. So you know, I told you about that time when he came to uh, Manny's. And I was like, uh, no. and I walked in the fundraiser and was like, uh, so you know, it was, a it was a fundraiser. And I walk in smack dab in the middle of the height of the Ken Duncan joint. Uh -huh. And I, and like, it's like, everybody's like, oh my God, did he just walk into the fundraiser? <laughs> and you want to talk about people like, uh, and, 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 and you know, I, so he's having this thing and I stand up and I'm like, excuse me, sir. Um, can you please tell me, uh, 
What have you done for the? I was, you know, I did choke up a little bit. Mm. What did you? What have you done for the uh, African American community? Uh, you boy, you want to talk about a mug turning red? No. <laughs> and then it was like, and look, it was like all the black people in the room. First of all, it was like everybody black in the room was moving around, but they wouldn't. They was like, they was like, I'm nice. I'm nice. <laughs> and they would go the other way, right? Nobody really. Would. And so, um, I and it was like I stood up in like the whole room. It was like a hush silence. And I was, and he like beat red. I'm talking about beat red because it was like one of those. Well, uh, do da do 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 da. Well, uh, yes, uh, mm mm-hmm. And so it was like, oh, you you tried to. I couldn't come to Springfield anyway. Yeah. Well, you know, Stevie doesn't have what I quite call a poker face. (laughs) His first emotion will show, and then it'll just get uh, it'll get steely. Yeah, when I went to his fundraiser, he was uh, pretty surprised. You know, you know how he didn't like that? That's why I said he didn't have poor friends. He was like, whoa, 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 what are you doing here? I, I thought we killed you a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> like, I thought, I, I thought. You're so, <laughs> man, I'm going to tell you, though. It was funny because, first of all, man, it was good to go back. First of all, I had a, a crew. Shout out to the What's In It For The Black People crew and and allies who attended. Now, Ty, um, we showed up, man. What? Wait a minute. Hold on. Never mind. I'm going to come back. Did you see Tavis Smiley is ordered to pay uh, PBS at $1.5 million? He did what? <laughs> see how they do <laughs> I, I know that's a squirrel, but I just looked up, and I was just thinking about what brother can really afford to pay $1.5 million. I don't care. Who, I was just thinking, man. He and he was working. And he was on PBS, though. Like, it's free TV. They don't have no commercials. So, how is he? I, well, you know, uh, he makes his money. It's like, he's like a rock band. He makes his money traveling and doing uh, speaking engagements. Well, not after and, he, and selling books. Well, after he said that stuff about Obama, he was done. Anyway, Todd, when we come back, um, I'm you know, going to just... His silence is deafening right now. <laughs> right, his silence is deafening right now. Look, we got headlines to talk about. I know y'all probably want to hear a little bit more about the Springfield trip. Um... You know, they tried to... Look, man, let me just tell you this. No sooner did we get past Bolingbrook, like past Weber, you know, like, you know where you're kind of like in that point in no return, the phone rings. Because yeah. Bolingbrook, or is it Romeo Bill? Which one is that? Bolingbrook. They get off to get gas. Bolingbrook. That's me. <laughs> right, that's my stop to get gas. Yeah. And then go, because you're out of Cook County. Yeah. So you're good enough, far enough away. It's plenty, it's close by. So anyway... As we're driving down the bus, everybody's loaded. We're we're about to start singing songs, and everything is like. Well, that's not actually how phone rings anymore. Uh, uh, and then you know what? I'll tell you about it more when we come back. It's Talk Chicago 1690. More of the morning show with Ray oh, Jackson coming up. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> I see how you did that right there. You know what? We've got more people tuning in earlier now. What's up, y'all? How y'all feeling? All right, so I'm going to tell you. So I had a little anxiety going back. Um, if you think about, so if you think about, um, Man, everything I keep talking about is like four years ago. So if you think about four years ago, I came down to Springfield sort of around this same time. Uh, I think this was, you know what this was time was around? The time that Ken Duncan did the um, the sleeping bag trick and said he would sleep out in front of the, uh, whatchamajiggum for a budget. Really? No, yeah. I missed that one. And so I was just thinking about all of that stuff. Is that really your ringtone? No, I was like, that's why I was like, wait, mine goes, I can't do a Mac, I mean, Apple ringtone, so it was like, I so that's the best one I could think of. Hello? Hello? All right. Yeah, man, it was good, though. <laughs> it's funny and it's so what the funniest thing is is the white people that listen like like the white people that listen <laughs> that's hilarious and again 
what I must tell you is that, and I'm not like fooled, like fooled, but I will tell you that, like, you ever seen somebody, like, it was hilarious to see people who you know was like, aha. Like I ran into Bill Filer. No, really? <laughs> the first person I see getting off the elevator is Bill Filer. Now you know in the, in the hierarchy of Madagascar, he ranks pretty high, oh, right? Yeah. You know, as soon as I got through talking to him, the phone was like, "Yeah, right." This motherfucker's here. <laughs> yeah, pulled out his phone. Uh, yes, uh, he's moving on three. <laughs> he's on three. This is not a drill. Yeah. <laughs> I think the best part though was the diversity of the mix of people that came. Like no t shirts, no screen like people's like no What are these black right, no t shirts. Down on my do the but keep the music underneath it. Todd, when we last left off, we had just passed Weber Road, uh-huh. riding down the expressway on the first trip. Back to Springfield, the What's In It For The Black People crew was heading down to find out what was going on with House Bill 4865. There was a hearing when Todd, we were just about to start singing road songs. You know, I was trying to be like, 99 oh, bottles of beer. No, you know I wasn't singing Oh, Suzanne. You know, if it was anything, I was like, oh, you, ho- oh, let me stop. I was going to say, you, oh, you ho, Susanna. You know, I mean, you know Suzanne. Because you dumped that. Dumped that. Yeah, dumped dump that. that. Dumped <laughs> that. Dumped that. <laughs> no, Susanna. You know Susanna. Oh, I will never cry for you. Oh, let me stop. Let me stop. Anyway, so, <laughs> Todd. I'm listening to the phone when all of a sudden, I mean, I I look at the phone and it is State Representative Cam Butler. At that point, I'm thinking to myself, self, what could this be? Because we're on the road. And Todd, he was calling to tell me that they had decided to not call, not to have the uh, call the bill in committee. Uh And I was like, oh, no. So we got a busload of people. We done spent our money. And I was like, they are working to foil us. They are working to foil us. And State Representative Buckner was like, so I, I don't know if you guys want to come down still or not because they have decided that they're not going to um, put call the bill in committee. I was like, we coming. Yeah, right. We coming. He was like, hold on real quick. So then he calls me back and he says, all right, here's the plan. They're not, we've got a subcommittee that State Representative Justin Slaughter is going to chair. I was like, a subcommittee? We know what that means, but we're coming anyway. Yeah, we know what that means. (laughs) We're coming anyway. However, Todd, as we got to Springfield, there were more and more people, more and more legislators who were saying, hey, I would sign on to that bill. Todd, so then it was funny because, so we got, because I think they were trying to discourage us from coming because clearly somebody was listening to the radio. You know how I know we was listening to somebody? Oh, somebody listening. Right, well, you know how I know somebody was listening to the radio because no sooner did we get off, um, did we were we greeted by Donnie Trotter and uh, uh, Mike Lito. I couldn't tell them apart from a distance because, you know, they both like the same height and the same color. Oh, like right? <laughs> I was like, uh, Donnie Trotter, <coughs> Why you didn't bring Todd down here with you? I was like, because we're here on business. 
And we had a nice crew of people, Todd. So we got through security. We go up, Todd. And then we did like the Malcolm X movie, right? We go to the committee hearing. And then all the black people come in and they file in single file line. And then they sit across the front row. Todd. It was epic. Because it was like Justin was the only black person on the committee. Yeah. Right? And then it's usually, it was like an all white committee, except for Justin. And they were planning on, cu- and Todd, you know, you know, how you, you know how you turn on the lights and your parents catch you and you wasn't supposed to be doing something? It was like, everybody was like, wait a minute, because they wasn't listening to the radio station, <laughs> right? So they, they was just planning to come on and be like, let's chop this money up. And so they, while we were there, they had a subject matter hearing in which they were chopping up $375 million, right? So now imagine we came, right, to, to, to deal with the minority piece, right? To deal with, stop calling us minorities. And what is the subject matter hearing about? Minority contracting. Ah. $300 million, and they chop up $300 million. But now, you know how, you know how have you ever been like, Todd, been outnumbered? And then, like, your cousins come, and then it's like, now what? Now what? Yeah, right. Well, let me tell you. It was like the black people, in the, Justin was in the committee like, oh, my cousins just came through. Now what? Yeah, right. So now he start asking the questions, and the people like, hold on, wait. Hold it, hold it. And then it's crazy because yeah, all the people. We were just going to run this through. Right, we were just going to roll. But right. here's the other part. So then it's all the other people who listen to the show or who have heard rumors about the show or whatever. They're sitting behind us, and they're next up to present. So now they're about to present, and they know we all here like, don't say no minority. It was like as if on cue every word was, every other word was minority, minority, minor, and, the, and the crowd is like, and you could, they could feel the heat on their necks. Mm-hmm. And then the legislators that were on the committee were looking like, oh, damn. Damn, damn. $300 million, Todd. They're supposed to have a subject matter hearing on how the money was spent, and nobody had no information. Hmm. So it's like, so, Justin's like, so, what percentage of the popular of the primes is black? Well, well, uh, what we did, and then it starts to get to the point where people who, because some of our people have done what, this. Black again? Right. Black, well, <laughs> they were like, and then Justin's like, no, tell us the, the African American breakdown. Yeah. Well, uh, well, uh, well, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, well, uh, look, man. We thought you guys weren't looking. Right. They was like, they caught us. Yeah. They was like, <laughs> hearing over. Well, they was like, look, you know, y'all, go, they was like, y'all know y'all gonna have to come back. They was like, why didn't you tell us the black people were coming? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you how we knew the speaker knew we was coming. Because all the black staffers was working that committee. <laughs> I was so, it was the whitest committee ever. Let me tell you, I got pictures. The brothers was all on the wall like, now y'all know we ain't supposed to be, we ain't never had to work this damn committee. But it was definitely clear that they knew we were in Springfield. And it was definitely clear that it wasn't like, Hostile territory. It was definitely clear that what's in it for the black people is making an impact. Now, let me tell you, as we walked through the halls, guess who we ran into? In a bright yellow dress. Mary Flowers. Yes! (laughs) (laughs) We ran into Mary Flowers. And let me tell you about that. I would tell you about that, but you know what? Uh, You know what? It was, it was, it was, oh my God, it was a great moment. I mean, I really wish you could have filmed it. I mean, the way the elevator doors worked and everything, it was just timing. I bet you all want to hear that story, too. I'll tell you about that in another break because I got to get some of these headlines in. All right, Todd. You see Kim Fox drops the charges on Naisha Beeman. Well, uh, I believe she's working on it, but yes. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad that she is because I think that that is uh, the mom was a little. We don't sometimes black people act out extra rape. Like, I mean, I don't, let me not even go there. Let me say that you don't know how you are going to respond. Right? Right. You don't know how you are going to respond when that happens, right? And right. so I, I think it's just, but it just shows the insensitivity of the police, in my estimation, in some of those cases. You know, my. Well, yeah, I will say maybe sometimes you do have to be taken somewhere. 
But you know, not in handcuffs. Not in handcuffs, and they're not charged with something. Right. You know, I think it's like my cousin used to tell me, like, like if you call the re- one of the reasons people don't call the police black people is because. You, you, well, yeah, you might wind up getting arrested because the way we express ourselves, they're like, "Come down, calm down." Right. You're like, "But I'm trying to tell you, take it that way." You know, I'm, that's why I don't call the police because you know I'm already excitable, and if I had some coffee, it's gonna be a problem. I don't want no problems. All right, uh, you see all these conventions are canceling in Chicago. Yes, I see Oracle is just canceled. What's Oracle? Uh, I thought it was uh, Google. Or no, they're no, Oracle. Well, let me tell you this. It wasn't Google, but Oracle. But they're canceling stuff all around. The mayor was telling us that she was unveiling the new Shy logo, Chicago logo. Oh, uh, but it was, logo. yeah, we got a new logo. It's got a six-point star. Six-point star. I'm I'm wondering because if they, I'm going to just tell you, if they pay more than 75 It's like, you know, like the funniest thing to me is when people come up and they be like, and they be like, blue square, red star, C-H-I, block letters. This will be seventy five thousand dollars. Thank you very much. Yeah. I hope somebody black got that. Clarence could figure that kind of stuff out. <laughs> All right, y'all. We'll be back after traffic news and the weather. Thirty five thousand for five ninety nine. We'll be back. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Illinois Minotti tonight. I think I'm going to make the jump so I can start to connect the, connect the different pot tonight. I think we're going to go to Danny Solis tonight. I'm going to break down. I haven't heard much about him lately. Right, that's exactly why, because they're fishing. <clears throat> Uh, yep, we seen Mary Flowers. Come on, oh, wouldn't you like to take a picture with me? We were on the elevator. I was like, no, and the door is closed perfectly. It was like. Zzz, I didn't want to take a picture with him anyway. They were like, wait a minute. They were like, sure. I was like, that's Mary Flowers. They was like, it was funny. Because all of the places that I've described, I took them to. Like, I took them to Sandoval's office. <laughs> like, to where Sandoval's office was. I was sitting there. And the people were sitting there. I have a picture of me sitting right outside of that. I Man, it was, it was really, it was actually, I'm going to say that it did feel very good to return and it was like, I think the way that we, like not screaming, not t-shirts, yeah. everybody was looking nice and professional. It was an eclectic mix of seniors, um, middle-aged people, you know what I'm saying? We had a diverse group of people. It, and when I say diverse, I mean diverse black people. Right. Um, and it was like, you know, I think if you would have had like a group of people where the the legislators could have easily ignored them. Like, quite frankly, a lot of the black legislators, a lot of the people were their constituents, right? Because if you live in the city, right, <laughs> the people that came, they all were from the city right. for the most part. So they had, like, so you can act kind of crazy if you want to, but these are literally your constituents. And it was so dope, like, for us all to be, like, on one accord. Like even when the people who normally like Bob Israel went, mm. and he and Bob was ready to snap, and it was just like, can we stick with the program? Just stick with the pro. Just we said we wasn't coming to snap. We said we coming to make. And I think our silence and our discipline spoke more volume volumes more than anything else. And I think like Cam gets it right. Like man, there's a constituency. They can mobilize. They can call. They can, and as you think about the fact that there are really no political organizations, I'm telling you, I, I was thinking about this last night. Like, what's in the front of black people could literally, if <clears throat> if I could get the right team and the right 
people's buy-in to the point like where they'd be willing to travel, willing to. We could really, literally hijack the whole joint. You really not hijack the whole joint, but you could really become a formidable force without and, a second. And that's all you, you really need. You don't have to be uh, the uh, chairman of the, the Democratic uh, Party, Illinois, to have influence on in how things happen. I mean, uh, there are groups and and who aren't elected officials who you know the speaker is their guy. But in that, that means that they get a lot of stuff. But that's because they have some juice. You can have power by uh, organizing, as, as May said, and also, you know, electing a certain amount of people who are on your side. Let's be honest with you, that's... That's, that's where it is. That's where it right, is. as long as you go... Like, that was... When I had my conversation with the white elected official that's why again I asked about your thing about Rod and he was just like man we didn't have to this dude was messing around in my ward he was doing all type of stuff and I they knew they couldn't unelect him I knew they couldn't stop and so I was like when you go down there man you go and you get and you, you ain't holding we got votes we got jobs we got we got everything we need he can't touch nothing you got so he, so he has to negotiate with you. Right. And I'm saying, like, again, if we can get five state reps that are like, yo, we rocking with them. Like, that we got five state reps that are just like, yo, we rolling with what's in for the black people. It's, there's nothing that we can do to hurt them. All we can do is build them up in the black community. Right. I saw it happen. I saw a guy, and he had, like, like you said, he had about five people, I think, on his side. And they just, on certain issues, they were like, we are a, a block. We are going this way. You guys can go left, we're going right. Right. And then you say, because we're not going to go right, this this what we need to go this way. And so, even the fact that they were making mood maneuvers to block us or to block the bill because like then we ran into Christian and people everybody knew about the bill right so it's like that's the first thing like even following the process like who is actually who actually got a bill filed and is working the bill got the bill out of rules and obviously somebody was like y'all can't let this bill just sit in rules right because these motherfuckers are coming right, right? There's, gonna be a lot of noise there's gonna be noise about this and there's people behind it You're right You are tuned in to the Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, you know it's time for the social media question of the day. Hey, you know what? Though Throughout the show, I'm going to tell you about some things that happened. Hey, Ty, so guess who I ran into yesterday? Oh, man. I th- you know, I'm starting to run out of people. No, you, you know what? But you hit it right. I I ran into Mary, ran into Mary Flowers. Oh, oh, Mary Flowers, yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> it was funny, Ty. Uh, you should have seen it though. You, you, man. She had on like a bright yellow dress, and I. But I did, I did suffer. Uh, Sun was out when I came in today. PTSD. She might. Have. <laughs> I started feeling PTSD uh, when she uh, when she walked by. Uh, you know what? When I tell you, I'm gonna tell you about what happened. But I'll say that for the seven o'clock hour. Uh, now, for right now, we're gonna hit the social media question of the day, uh, Ty. You know, last year, or maybe two years ago, I think it was State Senator Kimberly Lightfoot passed a bill in the state, uh, sponsored in the state, passed a bill to mandate that cursive be taught in schools. Yeah. And at the time, when I first heard it, I was kind of like, mm, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, not, not I don't know. My friends wrote me a letter in cursive, and I was like, wow, this is old school. I couldn't read all of it, but <laughs> I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, first of all, can I tell you, when I learned to write cursive, I was so proud. Yes. Oh my God! When I first learned how to write it's like cursive, a secret language, right? It was like I and we didn't call it cursive. What did you call? We called it cursive. 
first. Uh, you know how to write cursive, right? Like when we first, and then a little bit later on, you learn this cursive, whatever. But I, I was thinking about it, and then over time, it was people like saying, like, you can't sign your, what? how do you sign the paper? How do you send documents? Yeah. You know, your signature, like when you go buy a car or house, how do you do it? You know, I, it you really. X, and then you have somebody who can do cursive, sign next to it. And that sounds like the slave stuff. Right. Yeah, right. Right. So you don't know. So now everybody just walking around X and contracts. Right. I am going to tell you when I sign stuff for Apple Pay and all that, though, I never put my real signature. I'd be like, ooh, this one will look cool today. <laughs> this one will look cool today. Right. Um, but Todd, then I, so I, I, I started to feel like she had a point. So in the state of Indiana now, they just passed a bill out of the Senate. And I think it's going to the house. And it is about... <laughs> people are silly. They've changed the screen. I know. To curse it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, they, so they, I was listening to the story about how they're trying to pass cursive, mandate cursive be taught in the state of Indiana. And... They were saying that they, it usually passes out of the Senate, but then doesn't make it through the House. And usually the big excuse. Really, that's interesting because here, it usually is the opposite. It passes through the House, and then it gets killed in the Senate. Right. Well, so essentially, the people in the, in the House were saying, well, kids in Indiana are too busy learning things already. They got a lot of stuff on their plate. Plus, everybody uses computers and tablets. Right. And still, so, you still sign that too, though. Well, well, but now you got a digital signature, right? So I'm just. Oh yeah, I do. I do, do use that a lot. Think about it. Your Apple ID is essentially a signature. You can get access to everything on your phone. You can spend money. You can spend, tuck your bank accounts, everything through your Apple ID. Yeah, right? but I went somewhere, and I don't even remember where it was. But I remember it saying, "Sign here," and sign on the electronic pad. Right, but again. Like if you look at all the signatures I got on electronic pads, I'd be like, Whoosh, I'm zero. <laughs> it's like you want me signing with a finger. It's not my, not a pen, right? Like yeah, that means you're right. I'm like, okay, John in the same right. So it's not really like they really want your signature. Like because if they really want your signature, they give you a pen and they say sign this, and then they'd be like, it's verified. Whatever. Good point. Right? Or they'd say put your signature in your phone and then scan it to the. But my point being, Todd. When I was listening to these Indiana the story, I was saying to myself, uh, um, I was saying to myself, man, what is it possible that writing could ever become obsolete? Mm. Right now, and, and, oh yeah, uh, and the reason I say this is because my kid is does do all of his work on the tablet. You know, I don't know if you know my my man Anthony Jackson. My man Anthony Jackson was at one point, um, we were working together on a project. And so I was like, we couldn't find a, um, we could not find a, uh, a typewriter or anything for him. So I was like, just take notes, just take notes. And then at the end, he hands me this piece of paper. And I'm like, what the heck is this? <laughs> like, it was a combination of print and cursive and- Oh, that's what I do. I don't know what the heck. It is, but it, I mean, I, I do some of that, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, when you do cursive, you start to do your own style. And, you know, you think you think God, things are cool, so you right. change your T or you write your M a different way or whatever. But then he was, you know what he said to me? He said, I mean, I've, I've used a computer since I was like six years old. Like, I've never really had to write anything. Like, and, and I'm thinking about my kid who now does all of his work on a iPad. Right. Right? When does he have to write? Now, I think that's very dangerous. Right? And, but I was literally watching, listening to Indiana legislators justifying why kids shouldn't learn to write. Why they don't have to learn cursive. But the next thing would be printing. Why do I need to print? Well, I need to learn how to write it. I could just type it. So social media question of the day is, could writing actually ever become obsolete? Give us a call, 312-374-8130. 312-374-8130. When Milan first went to uh, De La Salle, uh -huh. 
You know what attracted her? Was the fact that they didn't, they sold them on the fact that they did all their work on an iPad. Right. And she was like, well, and at eighth grade, you're like, wait, you mean I can, right? Yeah. Is it possible, Todd, you seem like you had a story? Oh. Or you, did you I did have a story. Yeah, tell me the story. Wow. 312, give us a call, 312 374 I mean, I, 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 I mean, started going to the Milan story and I kind of lost my Oh, <laughs> but the cursive, I mean, think about can can you 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 can you write cursive? I love cursive, but I print most of the time. I love cursive too and I do print most of the time. And sometimes I forget some of the more fancy letters like I'm like, how does that F look again? Oh, red, yeah, remember <laughs> the F? The F is with the you got to go. Man, can you can you even write cursive? Like, can you I think I could still go through and do them all perfect. Like A Big A, big C, big D, big. I, I, I try to write a letter and I was like, ah, I don't know, I'm certain if this is, if you could actually read <laughs> this. So I, I went back and I, I printed it instead. You printed it. So uh, can you still write? Do you write? When's the last time you had to write? Like, do your kids write? Do your kids write? When you tell your kid to write something down, you know what the first thing they do? Whip out that phone? Yeah. Think about this. I, I always tell people sometimes, write your phone number down. And the kid, like if I tell my kid, let me get your phone, or you know, write the phone number down. First thing they're doing is whipping out the phone, or you know what they're doing, taking a picture. They tell you to write it down, and they take a picture. Exactly. I used to write everything down, but now I've, I've started taking pictures. You start see, see, I, you know what? I still bring a notebook uh, uh, to like beat meetings at times. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm like, eh. What do you do? Just turn on the recorder? Uh, I use a notebook. <laughs> I can't read a thing you got up here. Nope. <laughs> Literally. Uh, that might as, might as well be the Chinese, you know. Toyota, 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 because I can't read what you're writing up here. DC, is that what it says? Okay, I can see DC. I mean, I understand it. It's just too light. It's just not thick. DC, you're on the top of Chicago. I got, I got a question. I was a police officer for 28 years, and we had worked in the youth department. And they had kids to come in and they have to sign their name. At 17 years old, kids were not, well, young men and young ladies were not able to sign their names. What are they supposed to do to make their mark now? That's what we were just talking about, and you said it, a mark. That's right. It's, it's an mark. X. <laughs> it's going to be like, put you know, an X I, here. You know, the first, first time I saw this, I worked in the steel mill way, way back in the early 80s. And I met um, some of the old, older gentlemen from from the south right. and they were making their marks yeah yeah because they didn't me. know how to read or write are we going back to that uh, I'm, well see here's my thing i think that there's the potential because we don't recognize like i i think you could i think you've got to lay the groundwork down like i don't have a problem with the computers but think about this a kid doesn't do math anymore not in school they can whip out a calculator or a phone and the teachers teach with the calculator and the phone. They do. Yeah. I mean, they literally, like, remember, you if you got caught with a calculator, you was cheating. Look at the top of Chicago, 1690 AM. We'll be back. More of The Morning Show with Mays Jackson. Ooh, baby. Yeah, yeah. Sunset, well, I'm hey. Here I am, baby. What's up, y'all? Did anybody ever call it cursy? You ain't never learn how to write cursy? I used to be like, ooh, I learned how to write cursy. Here I am, baby. So, oh. Y'all take a moment to share the broadcast.
意。Yeah, I could write them all. I think I got them all. Wake up, y'all. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1698. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. I'm my co host, Taj Trojan. I don't know if you remember. Uh, Sonya is silly. No, but that's what Sonya was playing. Yeah, that's uh, she showed the, the video. Oh, she was showing the video. Oh. Uh, so that's what we well, were showing. You guys sure are clever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was pretty cool. I think I remember seeing that scene, even though I don't remember the movie. All right, y'all, it's Talk Chicago 1698. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. Got my co host, Taj Trojan. Taj. You know, I was thinking about um, the whole premise of reading, writing, arithmetic. Yep. Right? Reading, writing, arithmetic. Um, you know, in we have the audio book, right? So now you get in the car, you don't read the book. You put it in and you listen to it. Uh, not a bad thing actually to do on your way to Springfield. Uh, yeah, but... As a matter of fact, I think it saved some people's lives. <laughs> but, at the same time, it removes the necessity to read because you can be read too. Right? Writing... Just think, in writing, part of writing to me was it was a progression. You learn to make boxes and squares and all that. Then you learn to print. Then you learned cursive. And once you learned cursive, it was almost like a sign of you're ready to proceed into life. You Yay. have some of the skills that you need to lifelong skills. I was sitting here while we were gone, while you all were gone, and I was writing on it with my finger. If I could go through all of the cursive letters in their yes, I could in their original form, even. Not my adapted versions, but my right. printed T's and changed R's and things like that. Todd, but is it possible that writing could go away? Like again, a kid types. A ki kids nowadays, they don't. They you you know remember it was like a chore, like almost like punishment in your senior year or junior year when they started making you type your papers. <laughs> remember. Like, remember when you had to actually type a paper? And then, God help you if you didn't have, like, a correcting selectric. Oh. Yeah, boy. <laughs> I mean. It's that, a slow <laughs> Good Lord. White out. Back up. Uh, then the white out. If you went, went too soon. You, you see? Yeah. Now we're at a place where my kid doesn't have to write a paper. He types a paper. He's been typing since he was 
in Kim. A matter of fact, we was proud that he was typing before he was writing almost. <laughs> so I just wonder, is it possible? Let's go to Dr. Lisa. Dr. Lisa, you're on the top of Chicago, 1690. Good morning, Mace. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, Dr. Uh, Dr. Lisa. <laughs> I am a teacher. I teach adults, young adults and older adults. I teach nursing. Okay. So, I mean, uh, major right. They don't know how to do math. When I um, would give my math exam, medication, math exam, and I told them they had to do longhand division, some of these students had meltdowns. They turned red. You saw the blood drain from their face, and they turned pasty white because they don't know how to do longhand division or longhand multiplication. I'm like, oh, my God. When it comes to writing, they have to do nursing care plans or they have to do something related to writing. I'm like, I feel like I'm special ed because I don't know what the hell they're writing because they don't know how to write. Sentence structure is gone. And then when it comes to change or shift report, they have to write this and they don't know how to write it. I mean, they can write it, but it's not legible. And think about and this, there's no grammar. Writing. writing and then grammar goes away um, with texting. Right? Because now they got a whole text language. Let's go to Michael. Michael, you're on top of Chicago. Hey, good morning, fellas. Good morning, and, you know, Mike. Uh, uh, Dr. Lee is absolutely correct. Um, um, in medicine, you have to be able to do that type of stuff that she's talking about. I take shorthand. I still keep up with my shorthand. Uh, I type. And, and, you know, the CMS, Central Management Services, there are jobs that pay more in terms of administrative aids versus a clerk because you know the difference of knowing how to uh, deal with cursive writing as well as shorthand. And I just think that um, the only time it, it, writing is a, a foundation of critical thinking because you have to take the time to actually write and you have to be able to do it in a legible way when people write out scripts in medicine and 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 law they use uh cursive writing to do so mm -hmm. um now the paralegal situation in terms of paralegals here in this country um are, are going to the software so sooner or later the chickens are going to come home the roost and you can kind of tell it with students who are coming up to be in these professions when they don't know the basics and hey, congratulations for going to Springfield and coming back safe. <laughs> okay. Hey man, you know what? You have a good day. Thanks, hey, Mike. Mike. I'm gonna tell you, it's not going to say in Springfield and we safe. They need to be hoping they safe. Right? Yeah, you know when you said earlier though about uh, people won't use math anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, Isaac Asimov. Uh, you remember the movie I Robot? I didn't watch. Smith? I didn't watch. But you remember? Yeah. Well, he wrote that, and he wrote about society changing and becoming more te technological. And basically, he, that's what happens in his book is that there's technicians that know how to fix machines, but they have no idea how these are, the machines are created, what they really do. They just know the nuts and bolts. There it is. It's Top Chicago 1690. We'll be back. The station, 1690 AM, WVON. Go. Yes, they are trying to create an emoji. Uh, there's a book that was written in all emoji, right? Don't be surprised if at some point they do that. Good question. I'm telling you, it could be obsolete. I mean, you think about it. And then once you can't write, you probably can't read. The next step is let them read to you and the machine tells you what to do. Big colors. Program you. Um, think about no no physical education in school no more. Kids don't just do recess automatically. Man, I hope they don't. We don't turn into like a finger. Like I hope we don't uh -huh. like morph into just like you only need one finger to push one button because your job is just one thing. Push the button, push the button, and mm. over evolution, your other fingers go to smaller because you never use them. <laughs> right. All 
I mean, but think about not being able to count. What happens? Think about the cell phone has replaced the brain in a lot of cases or is an augment augmentation to your brain. It remind it relieves the need to think or do critical skill critical thinking in some cases. Even as you talk to Siri now and ask Siri to do things for you and ask your phone and as things become more automated, there will become less and less people that have the basic skills. And now with self thinking and teaching computers too. Right, think about it. The the uh the IBM computer can beat um Rihanna. The IBM computer can now beat a human in chess consistently. Terminator. And I'm like, why do we need you stupid humans? You're so emotional. I'm emotional and I can't let go. Trying so hard. You and Sonya have the camera tied. <coughs> yes. Uh, Asmina also, I thought it was Asmina. He think he know everything. Who cares what his name is? Isaac. Says he thought that... Um, as, uh, as anyway, Asimov. That's probably Adric what it is. Asimov. I don't think it's Asimov. Look, I was reading his stories while you're still in kindergarten. <laughs> I don't care what his name is. He He's probably right. I never really cared about things like that. Hey, is it Isaac Asimov or Asimov? Is it Asimov or Asimov? Uh, so look at that. Boy, he's got to prove me wrong. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> he also uh, predicted that there would be a, a, a great section of the society. We Actually, he wrote about different communities. And in one community, everyone communicated by their computer. It was it was actually, uh, I won't even say bad taste, it was past bad taste, to literally go and see someone and talk to them uh, face to face. And uh, it seems like there are portions of our society who have kind of retreated into that I don't have to see anybody anymore. I can do everything I want. I can stay at home. I can write stuff. I can order out. You know, the only time I have to come out is when I have to go do government things and uh, you know get your driver's license, that kind of stuff. He he wrote a series called it's The Foundation. Ignore him. <laughs> it's as a mom. Yes. That's what I said. No, you said as men. Man, he don't know what I said. I was, speaking, I was speaking language just that you <laughs> on the other side of this can listen to. But either way, he wrote about how society was being detached from uh, each other through technology. And, and how when technology gets too good, your tools and reading, writing, and arithmetic aren't as important because you can learn things to uh, fix and such without knowing uh, higher math or being able to write because those skills just aren't needed anymore. Just got to know to replace this widget with this widget. It was pretty good.
You are tuned in to the Top of Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Hey, Todd. Got to say what's up to the rest of the WVOA Morning Show team. What's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, as well as Miss Sonia Escobar, the music conductor of the soul playing. Todd, I never heard the words to that song before. That song? I never heard that before. So oh, that, is that a duet? That. Is it a man and a woman? Wait, wait. I'm confused. It's a man and a man? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. You've heard that song before? I've heard the song, but I never heard the words. Is that a man singing to a woman? That's a man singing to a man? So, yeah, um, Ty. Uh, that, I guess I wasn't listening to enough of the words. I, I know that I will definitely not see. One more reason I do not like house music. <laughs> I'm telling you. They be sn- but I, I hear you. It's a Chicago classic. But if you out there, that you a sounds, man. That but, sounds like disco. But wait, if you a man out there dancing to you a free man, and this is a man singing to a man, what? Like, I mean, I've seen a lot of dudes hit the floor to this. What? What am I to think? See, man, this is when you can't listen to songs in the headphones. See, it's all good when you can't hear it all the way, but when you gotta zoom in tight, and it's like, whoa. Hey y'all, this is the Talk of Chicago, 1690 AM. Um, I'm, I, you know, the reason that Sonia is playing this song is because she is a musical genius. Musical she, genius. She's a musical genius. And let me tell you why she's a musical genius. She's a musical genius, Todd, because did you hear about Joe Biden? Did, can we find some audio on that? Somebody, Todd, can you come and help Sonia find some audio? Todd, um, I, this segment is Joe Biden versus Bernie. Bernie versus Biden. Um, this is what I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with trying to figure out where will black people go in Illinois. Black people. So, you know, I was thinking, like, when it comes to Bernie versus Biden, if you are to look at social media, then you would think that this is a Bernie runaway. Right, it's almost like it, like the 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 black people of social media fame with the loudest voices are the Bernie Bros, hmm. right? But if you get outside of the social media bubble, right, and you get off the out off the computer and into the real black world, it seems to me that Joe Biden has the moment. Todd, I'm curious to know from the WVON listeners, who do you have, Biden or Bernie? I think Elizabeth Warren is a non-factor. Now I am interested to see who she endorses. Yeah. Now I think it. I think it. I think we gotta. I think the instinct is that she would instantly endor- endorse Bernie, but I think if she wants to have a democratic future, like in four years or eight years. She's probably going to have to stick a knife in Bernie. She's in a, a rock and a hard place. But as... <coughs> as uh, uh, um, somebody get a plastic bag around this guy. Uh, somebody... Yeah, right, 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 right. But as my favorite uh, Democratic socialist says, Warren is not a socialist. So it would not be surprising at all if she went for Biden. And in that case, does that mean that Bernie is baked? Oh, I think he's baked already. You think he's baked? Oh, yeah. Like baked in the cake? He's a dead man walking. Dead man walking. So do you think the party conspired against him or just the fact that he is... No, there's there's, there's a a major part of the nation that is not ready for uh, total socialism. And he is is as close as as we get in our country to being a true socialist. All right. So give us a call. 312-374-8130. 312-374-8130. Uh, who, who are we talking to? Bernie or... Who are black people voting for? Bernie or Biden? Bernie or Biden? Now, I, I got some... I, Todd, did you find that uh, audio? We want to find the audio clip of Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg because P- P- Pete Buttigieg in Dallas, Texas. Because apparently there was a speech there, but in that speech... Joe Biden suggested that his, not suggested, stated that his number one legislative priority would be 
the LGBT Community Equality Act. Not, not, not now, now. I, I would like to see what that what that says. Okay, so I, I'm a, I want you to. So, Todd, you got you got your work cut out for you. Cause I'm gonna take some phone call. Cause I I was looking at it when I first saw it. I was like the Dallas Voice. What the heck is a Dallas Voice? But then I looked, and actually he said it back in June too. The LGBTQ, the Equality Act would be his number one legislative priority. Now, I gotta juxtapose that with the fact that every news channel cycle. Pundit, everything says that Joe Biden's hopes rely on black people. And he, if it's true, so if it's true, what does that mean? What does that say? And that means that somebody needs to speak up and say, hey, bro, what you got for us? Because. <laughs> And they need to do it now. <laughs> well, well, I almost feel like it might be too late. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But I want to start here. I want to start right here. Black people, who you got? Joe Biden or or Bernie Sanders? I want to hear from the WVON listeners. Let me go to line two. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I love you, Maze. You know that's me. I, I love you. Oh, I know I'm not going to say your name because I'm going to get right. you in trouble. Well, guess what? what? I did send you a little note. I saw that. I saw. I that's why I said I'm not going to. For the last couple of weeks, like, that's how he got there and that's who his friend is. Uh. And I know that for a fact. Uh. Your, your enemy is my enemy, okay? <laughs> okay. Tell me. Now, but tell anyway, me. Anyway, I've been all over social media. I've been putting everything down. I've been getting great response. I am not voting for Biden or Sanders. I do a write in for Warner. And that's because I'm just sending a message. I am definitely going to vote the down ticket. But for president, I ain't thinking about neither one. They offer enough absolutely nothing. And Biden is ridiculous. I can't wait to see what he's going to do with Trump. It's, it's sad. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh, okay. Thank you for calling. I'm still not going to say your name because I'm going to get you in trouble. But, but thank, thank you for calling. Um, let me go to Brother Ball. Brother Ball! Give me right. What is going on, man? What is going on? Now, you know. Now, you know, Maze, if I was betting. I had to sit back and look at it. I was talking to the guys. We sitting back checking it out. <laughs> and they say, all right, all right, who you voting for? You you voting for Booty? I say, no, Booty, 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 he got a, he got a gig already. <laughs> uh, we going, we, if, if, if I had to go, if I had to go to the poll by gunpoint, guess who I would vote for and why? Who would you vote for and why? I would vote for Biden. Because Bernie Sanders looks like he is one breath away from a a, 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 a a cardiac arrest or something. Do you hear how he talks? He doesn't, you know, neither one of them look in, in really good shape, you know, especially besides Trump. So I don't know who to vote for looking at the appearance. They're not talking about nothing. You know, they both look like they got one leg in the grave. So how do we keep getting these 70-year-old... You know, I, I just don't get it, man. So if I had to vote, I would have to go for the younger by a couple years, Joe Biden. Okay, so you got Joe Biden if you had to pick. You got to pick. Okay, so I'm going to thank you, Brother Ball. Brother, first of all, Brother Ball. And you got to remember. Oh, go ahead, Brother Ball. Brother Ball always keep it real. You know, because Brother Ball be telling us what the guys say. Mm, right. See, Brother Ball talk to the brothers. But, you know, but bro, I got to check out and find out what Brother Ball is, is in that space. But Brother Ball... But, but you know all those people, people he's right. The and gas Warren is like, like isn't he like seventy two or something? Warren? Yeah. They all like I mean, they're all like over three quarters of a decade old. Yeah, I mean four years from now, they'll all be closing in on the they'll be on the other side. Well, the wrong side of seventy five, I think. No no no, that, the other two will be on the wrong side of eighty. <laughs> wow. I mean, I'm just saying. Okay, so I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna age it, but let me go to Anthony. Anthony, you want to talk Chicago? Sixteen ninety. Brandy or good, mor com good morning. Good morning. How are you, uh, Anthony? What's up, man? Where you been, man? Man, I've been I've been listening. <laughs> okay. I've been listening. I have a little trouble getting through some days, but that's another story. My thing with Bernie Sanders, man, is that who's gonna pay for all this stuff? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know that that's the only the, 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 and see. When he lost last time in sixteen, right? His his people that followed him, they just let them. They're not Democrats, man. 
Right? He's not the only thing that could have been worse than Trump winning would have been Bernie Sanders. That man, because now we'd be trying to pay for this stuff. It'd be time. To, we'd definitely be in trouble <laughs> by now. You know what, Anthony? And see, this is the funny thing. Thank you, brother. They act like we don't pay no money. Like we ain't got no taxes. I was thinking about the whole thing with um with uh, Bernie Sanders and who was going to pay for it and why the difference in you know what the biggest difference between um, the Bernie Sanders people and the Joe Biden people is they got a job (laughs) you know what I'm saying like not a gig but a job a real job right like they got a house they got a career and they like man I'm paying like they have a concept of how much it costs usually socialists the most of the socialists I know live at home like most of the socialists live at home with the Democrat, with a moderate Democrat, right? Who allows them the ability? Look down, Ty. Could you imagine? What are you tell, trying to say, uh, sir? Let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. With your dad, what could you imagine you telling your dad you was a Democratic socialist? He'd be like, <laughs> like, how do you expect to eat? <laughs> we'll be back after traffic and the weather. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming up. Man. I'd be like, he had to be an undercover Democratic Socialist. You know what I mean? yeah, like he, he had to be a spy. Look, bite the hand that feeds you. Yeah. Oh, what you think? What you think his grandpa would have said? <laughs> his grandfather would have jacked you up, like, boy. I spent all this time building this do- this dominant legacy for you, t- Bernie Sanders. <laughs> How epic. Mm. You know what though, Ty? That sounds like that's like what a kid would do. I'm telling you, my son. It's like if I say I well, I love the Bears, he'd be like, you know, I'm rooting for Green Bay, right? Yeah. I'd be like, really? Like he will call he me. Got to take the other side. <laughs> right. He is the contrarian, like his dad. Right. <laughs> it's like I'd be mad, but I'd be realizing that's what I do. Like, like hey. who is the? I am. I root for the bad guy. Like I'm the guy at the game that's like, yes, I enjoy all of the dirty players. Right, like I hate congeniality between like I, the funniest That's thing. Funny. That is what I like about the uh, the Big Ten. The what? Big Ten, they play hard, it's right. rough, but they help each other up. I knock you down, I'm gonna pick you up. I, I may knock you down uh, a couple plays later, but I'll pick you up. <laughs> I I like the funniest thing in the world was to watch the bad boys. Uh, 30 for 30 with my son uh-huh. and why I was like you think you could play basketball during that right like he is just like watching him he is just like oh right it's like man some of those things it be like y'all self man y'all self <laughs> yeah the funniest I mean watching him watch that he was just like I mean that, that's that's more than a that's like a flagrant six yeah, six. <laughs> uh-huh. Alright, y'all, take a moment to share the broadcast. I'm going to let you talk to Todd and Sonya. Go ahead, Todd and Sonya. Take me away. Take me away. Take me away. Oh. Yay. Nah. I do miss the more physical play, though. I will say that. Not the crazy stuff. Not the clothesline. And I mean, Kevin McHale clothesline, Kurt Rambis. Thought that was going to be a riot. And there's a picture on Facebook with Xavier McDaniel choking somebody. <laughs> uh, that's a little far outside the lines. But yeah, this whole everybody standing around shooting 30 footers. I hate this shit. Uh, I mean, I see some plays where they run down the court. Guy gets the ball. Somebody's running behind him. The guy who has the ball is standing at the three-point line, and he throws it four feet behind it to some guy who who pulls up and takes a shot from there. How can that be good basketball? I mean, I hate, like, what sucks to me is coming across and, like, the Trey Youngs and all that because it sucks to little kids trying like every no kid do you know like you could if you if if you are a kid with a short to mid range jumper mm-hmm. you can kill the game because everybody else is shooting threes they like kids are stepping like the 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 three is the dunk right the Bulls literally told Kobe White don't take the mid range jumper that's a bad shot. <laughs> Mm. 
You are tuned into Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co host, Todd Stroger. Did Yo, y'all find any audio Claire. on that? You find any audio? No? Nothing? Something? I'm always telling Claire she ought to do some fiddling. Some fiddling? Mm -hmm. oh, first of all, Claire is too dignified to be fiddling. That's exactly how, because she just ignored. She looked at you like, oh, you got some fiddling. <laughs> yeah. Fiddling, that when it. Okay, you know, when I hear fiddling, I think of fiddler. Fiddler! Hey, Fiddler! Fiddler was a hero. Was he a hero? He was. Was he? I gotta go back and check it out. I just know... He was the glue that kept the, everybody, uh, all the black folks together and safe as much as he could. Was, now, Fiddler was... Was that Lou Gossett? Yeah. Ah, uh, boy, don't you go around there. Come on here. Uh, You come on over here, Toby. I'm gonna show you how to be a Toby. You, don't, you, don't you be talking that African mumbo-jumbo. Yes, he knew how to, to survive. To survive. <laughs> come on over here. Girl, when he come knocking on that door, you just open it up. Won't you be fighting with Massa? Nah, dog. The <laughs> fiddler was not a hero. <laughs> well, let me, tell me, let me tell you this, please. <laughs> you know, I love when you Negroes talk this. Thing. <laughs> and you know who would not be here? Who? Us, uh, our ancestors, just didn't decide that we are going to live and hope that in the end, that our our future uh, descendants will have something and be able to get out of this. So let me just tell you, that is exactly. It's always cool to say, "I will be kill kill monger. I jump off the boat." I, yeah, I'm, right. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But I, mean, I am. I'm not talking about you. I'm okay. talking about your ilk. Okay, but I was just gonna say, Mary, where are you when I need you? <laughs> Somewhere <laughs> trying to. She probably punching a heavy bag right now. I saw that that rascal Maze Jackson. I didn't want to take a picture with him anyway. Um, uh, but no, Todd. Uh, I was thinking like more like you know like. You imagine I see movies when we see movies. Black people, mm -hmm. like that's Fiddler is our hero. Uh, well, who's the hero in Braveheart? I want a Braveheart black movie, right? Well, you know what happened to him, right? Yeah, I know they pulled his um, they pulled his uh, guts out through his 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 yeah, he posterior. Got, he got drawn and quartered. Yeah. No, he, did he get drawn and quartered? I and, thought they and, pulled it out. I thought they they movie. disemboweled but, him. Uh, yeah, but they said, disemboweling is something I would never. I, I, I can't even imagine that. I mean, and it was like they did it on the thing, and it was but like they end up cutting you in, in chunks, and then they they put your head on a pike, right? Give me liberty or give me death. Yeah, right. See, that's they see, that's the whole Kanye choice, right? But that's when people say you don't have a choice. You do have a choice. You do. I don't want those to be my two choices. I mean, sometimes that's like politics, I just man. Want the liberty. The choice is between yes, but freedom ain't free, right? See, free. see, freedom ain't free. Fiddler was like sheesh, uh, sheesh. I mean, I, I know I'm speaking in that line, <laughs> but hey, I, I've been in the fight. I've been in the fight. I understand it. Okay. So, but <laughs> that does not mean that you don't need someone who can can save the masses. Right. Fiddler. I just want somebody that, I want a warrior savior. Like, I won't like, like, why do I see heroes? That's, like, that's why people didn't like, uh, I hate the Jews. Jesus. Because they, the, the Jewish people were looking for a Messiah who would be like King David, a, a warrior who would say, let's go! And everybody just run up and just knock him out. But that's not what they got. And 600 years later, the Roman Empire finally fell. Right. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. For the people who was waiting, though, they He's was like, this. They, they was kind of like, this Jesus, man. This fight, you know, I'm not no disrespect. No, look, I'm no fight. But you know what that's like? What? It, it was like the um, the virus that you get on your computer. Mm -hmm. It may not uh, take you out today, but six months when you're doing something, all of a sudden everything is going poof. And you're like, what happened? No, nah, that empire still lasting, bro. It's just called the Catholic Church. That's how you know the story. No, they're just rich. <laughs> that's, rich. That's totally there was a time when, you're right, when the Pope said, let's go left, everybody went left. It's not like that anymore. No, not right now. So we just got to tell the preacher, the, pre the priest, everybody just stay out. Stay out. All right, gonna let that sit again. Let that sit in for a minute. You shouldn't have connected them with that one, though. Let that be. All right, John. <laughs> Todd, um, we are really talking about Sanders and Biden. Can I just say one more squirrel thing?
before we go on to our amazing, I mean, beautiful black woman today? Of course, you're a free black man. Uh, you know what? I was uh, pulling. Free because, because, uh, <laughs> I'm free because of Fiddler. Thank you, Fiddler. I appreciate you, Fiddler. Thank you, sir. Good Lord. I learned that good dance. And don't split, uh, Claire, do not fiddle. Okay, no fiddling. Do you remember what okay. happened when uh, the mistress came back and she got some water from Kizzy? Uh uh. And she sent them, oh, and she drank from the cup. And, and she Kizzy spit, spit in it. Yeah, right. You can't win the war, but you can win a little battle. You know what? I'm going to tell you. I had a sense of situation like that. We did a. Well, let me stop. Yeah, hey, let's, let's not hear you. Okay, Ty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ty, real quick, though. Uh -huh. uh, before, because since we're playing squirrels, squirrel games this break, mm -hmm. like we forgot all about Biden and. Right. Oh, oh yeah, we're talking about it. Let me just tell you. Yeah. Uh, I was pulling out of the driveway this morning, and guess what I saw? What? A skunk prowling the garbage can. Oh, your skunks are still living in the neighborhood. Uh, so, uh, excuse me, Ward Superintendent and Alderman, they're skunks. We need our alleys baited because the skunks were like real skunks. And I, I was just. Know if skates and skunks fall for that kind of stuff. For baiting? Do they? I don't know, but I'm going to tell you what, y'all better come because that's not going to end well. That is just no. not going to end well. And, it, and I'm, I'm not sure people, I'm telling you, I'm not sure urban the urban world is prepared for a skunk. And I was just thinking he was prowling around, and I'm the only person up at 4 o'clock in the morning. So me and him are probably going to see each other again. Yeah, he'd be like, what's up, bro? Right, right. He like, and, <laughs> you know he's going to be like, you trying to get in your car? <laughs> you trying to get in your car? Right. Like, you know, I'm chilling out right here, right? right. I'm going to be like, it's $10 for me. Stop. <laughs> you want to make sure your car going to be here? Give me $10. Right. All right, y'all. Hey, y'all. It is time for the beautiful black woman of the, of the wait, of the day. Right? It's the beautiful black woman of the day. Right, because it's Women's History Month. Ty, speaking of that, women are getting us kicked off the air next week. So uh, starting next Monday, right, that's right. it's Boss it's boss radio, so women will be taking over the air. I don't, you know. So I need a job for Monday, somebody. Oh, I got a job, man. My gutters need to be cleaned up. No, I want somebody to pay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay you, all right. All right, but this week's be uh, black, beautiful black woman of the day, let me tell you a little bit about her. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> see if you can guess who her name. Her real name is Robin Fenty. She was born February 20th, 1988. Mm -hmm. uh, she went to Cumber school in Barbados but dropped out of high school at the age of 15. Uh, she was a she had her breakout beauty moment because she is a worldwide pop star but she just recently released a beauty cosmetics line called Fenty named after her Robin Fenty. Uh, now beauty it now check it out uh, it was launched in 2017 and let me tell you Todd it is a billion dollar brand now billion dollars that makeup wow. is the real deal uh and she started out as a singer now check it out uh she's had um now a lot of her her music is driven and her success is driven by the fact that her father was addicted to alcohol and crack cocaine but she was determined to succeed mm -hmm. now let me tell you she's had some major accomplishments including nine grammy awards 12 billboard music awards 13 American Music Awards, 8 People's Choice Awards, among other things, she's also received an MTV Icon Award. Let me tell you what, she is also responsible for me having my wife. Because that was our very first date. Todd, have you figured out who I'm talking about? If you haven't figured out yet who this beautiful black woman of the day is, it's Rihanna! 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 How did I miss that? Because uh, Todd... You know, you were probably watching, like, Goldie Hawn or something. Hey, it's the Talk of Chicago 1690. We'll be back at the traffic and the weather and some news. Live from the WBON newsroom. Hey, I actually like how these are coming out. The woman? Yeah, like I like how, how it sounds, sort of. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I, 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 matter of fact, I'm going to ask Todd not to uh, divulge it to me. Cause I'll never get it. Right. I like how we're. I like the. I like the. Hey. So I. I like how it's kind of. Ty, can you guess who this? See how these things come together. Yes, Rihanna. Can I, did I ever tell y'all the story about the Rihanna concert? I'm sure I did. But the Rihanna concert. So, I had a hookup. This was during my most amazing man in the world. I was lobbying. I had good gobs of money. Um, I had expense accounts. I had just all types of little things going on. And 
I had asked Carrie out for a long, like, I had asked her, like, to, I had court side at the Bulls. I asked her to go. She didn't go. <laughs> I, I had a, a box at Blackhawks. Uh, Dennis Savard was hosting. She didn't Sad go. Uh, right? Uh, and so this was going to be my last date attempt. I got two tickets to see Rihanna. It was like when Rihanna was at the peak of peakness. They weren't the best tickets, but it was like you couldn't get. It was like club level row one. Um, and I was like, I was like, would you like to go to this get like to this concert? And I was like, if she tells me no, this is the last time I'm asking her out. I'm through, you know, you through telling me no. And so she fine. So she said, yeah. Now there's more to the story because she almost canceled again. No. Right? She was like, she was having some issues, and she was just like, she didn't know if she really. She was just like, I don't know if I want to go. Um, but she was like, I'm gonna go. And she went. And then I spent the next six months pursuing her. But it was like, but the Rihanna concert was like our first real date, and then we went to um, Aww. what's the name of um, oh, oh, and they survived, oh, oh, crunch, yeah, I saw Rihanna. Oh my God, I saw Rihanna too. That concert was like, holy moly, but I was like, I was focused, I was focused and in love. But I'm gonna tell you that Rihanna. She could have been a distraction, but I was I had wanted to go out with Carrie for so long. Like so long it was crazy. But so coyotes would get rid of the skunks. You need more coyote space. You know. What do you coyotes? Oh yeah. Well not never one in the Bugs Bunny movies. <laughs> there weren't a lot of, there was only one skunk in the Bugs Bunny movies. Pepe, Pepe Le Pew, he was smart mug. <laughs> Pepe Le Pew, he thought he was a cat. cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I think that's what's gonna be the down child, downfall. Left. That damn. T- Man, I bet you if you wanted to go to any, I bet you can go to Florida for like twenty bucks right now. I Jamaica. bet you can go to Jamaica for like fifty. I just looked, man. I bet, and, I bet and, and Italy is like thirty nine. Prices are spiking up. Okay, really? Yeah, which is weird because the season. Probably because they're be cutting over. down the number of flights. Yeah. Right. So it's probably the number of flights that are going. Oh uh, no! I, 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 let me tell you what. <laughs> Yeah, you glad you're married. Yeah, it's crazy out here. I don't even know how you talk to me. What up, Mayor Act Power? Shout out to Carolyn Bryant. What up to my beautiful and lovely wife, Carrie K. Still. What up to Carlin Tools? What up, CT? All the way from Dallas, Texas. Sly Townsend. What up, Edelon, Dave Sigler, Mario C. Jones. What up, Cassandra? What up, Carol Zwiezek? What up, Tamara Smith, Randy Spann, Leo Charrier? Lee, I just got it. Are you Creole? Is that why your name is Charrier? And you so light skinned? I got it. What up, Laverne Smith, Ball, James, Matthews, James, you should have went with us, dog. What up, Diane Scott? Am I still mad at Beulah? I forgot. I can't remember if I'm still mad at Beulah because, you know, she was talking that alpha stuff. What up, Tamiko Holt? What up, Regina Gibson? What up, James Matthews Jr.? What up, Marcus Allen? Marcus Allen, hear his voice. Good morning, Evelyn Dunlap. Man, dog. No, I'm... 
I think I'm still mad at Bueller. I think I'm still mad at her, right? Oh, like, to think about it. I was like, you never been mad at somebody you can't remember if you're still talking to them or not? I hate when people get me. Like yesterday, somebody got me who was snaking me the whole time, but then they came down to the hearing yesterday like, I'm here to support you. And I was like, and I hugged them after it was too late. She was like, I was like, ah, oh, you was the... Yeah, before you could remember. Before I rem Like, you yeah. know how you don't remember who the person is? Yeah. And then you hug them, and then you like, that because a fuzz Oh, I need to go take a shower. Right, like, because <laughs> a fuzz kind of fuzz Like, you've been snaking me all this time, and then I remembered. However, let me tell you what. What I was doing yesterday was... We had lobbying, right? So, my goal is to get my bill passed. My goal is not to go fight people. So, I could be right with you. If you want to smile and be nice, I could smile and be nice. Except for the kidney puncher. Uh, <laughs> you love that, I had a speaker you? that comes to the bar and says, what are you doing here? <laughs> I think I had a feeling. Don't you know you're not allowed, boy? I got, I got a feeling. <laughs> That's what it sounded like to me, too. Mm -hmm. I got a feeling that right now, if he could be like, could we let it be? Could we, could we strike up a... Let me tell you. I'm going to tell you, yesterday, I nobody... It, it was a small... It was silent but deadly. Like, I'm just telling you, I don't think people knew how to how to act, how to respond to that. And it was like, man, and when Miss Jessie gets you, because Miss Jessie, you know, them seniors be like, uh-uh, come here. She grabbed Christian Mitchell like, I want to know mm -hmm. why you voted Christian. Mm -hmm. He was like, I, I'm not in the legislature. But when you was, yeah, see, I, she was like, I, yeah, know. I know. I know you. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mae Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Hey, Todd. Let me tell you what, man. Talk Chicago 1690. I'm asking, is it Bernie or Biden? Bernie or Biden. I also want to say what's up. Thank you to everybody. Shout out, shout out, shout out, right? To everybody, all the state reps and state senators and everybody who welcomed us to Springfield. Gotta say, big shout out to Cam Buckner, State Representative Cam Buckner. Shout out to State Representative Lamont Robinson. Even though, you know, we was asking Lamont, what's up with that 15 million? He was like, I'll be back. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Actually, though, no, I thought it was pretty cool that he came to. Uh, welcome and meet and kind of track the bill. Shout out to uh, State Representative Leader Jahan Gordon Booth and Leader Art Turner. Man, Art Turner, you see Art Turner got an office in 300. His office is in the Speaker's office. Really? Yeah. He a big grip. He a big grip, yep. But, you know, Art, and I was like, you sure you want us to come up there? He was like, man, you welcome all the time. Come on. It was like, but they, you know, they was like, you gonna stay in this meeting. So we just had to keep on moving. Uh, shout out to uh, State Representative Chris Welch, uh, Emil Jones the third man. It was actually tied. It was like it was pretty cool. I only had one real like vociferous hater from the South suburbs, oh. from the Southland. I was like, why you ain't gotta come? Just don't like you ain't gotta say nothing nasty. I didn't even say nothing nasty about you. Yeah. yeah? See how that go? All right, but I want to talk about Bernie. Bernie versus Biden. Ty, I'm going to just say this. Black people are practical. And I just think that more black people are going to mess with Bern, Biden over Bernie. Like the people that vote. I think that the I think that the Bernie socialists are not 
able to they want everything free because they feel like somebody owns them. That's why they're on the team with Bernie. I think the Joe Biden for black folks, remember we went to that meeting in North Beverly? Them black folks sitting in the room, how many of you think it's gonna be Bernie Sanders? And how many of you think it's gonna be Joe Biden? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> too many Bernies in that group. In that, and can I tell you out of out of fifty people there, how many of them you think is voting? Out of fifty? Yep. Uh I'm gonna go with forty six. I'm going to go with 49.9. Because if you was at a meeting talking about judges on a Monday night, on a Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, yeah. you going to vote. Yeah, you probably are. I think that the Bernie voters are oftentimes, I think Bernie voters are going to be idealistic. They, they, they hope for a better world, but they're not being practical. Uh, but uh, let's go to the phone line. Because maybe I'm confused. Maybe I don't get it. Let's go to the phone lines. Who's on two? Is that Art? What's up, Art? How you feeling, man? Hey, what's going on? Right, Hello, Art. So, Art, who you got, man? Who you got? I'm going uh, Bernie Sanders all the way. I hope um, he picks uh, Elizabeth Warren as his uh, running mate. Bottom line to her. this whole notion that they will not be able to um, use any resources to solve the problem. When a white man gets to the office, you see he can do whatever he wants. So that notion that they're not going to find the money, just take the money from the military, whatever you need to do, you'll get it done. But this age discrimination, I think, is uh, not good at all. I'm 50 years old, and I can run up and down the court for four you hours. You ain't 80. With the best of You me. can't do it at 80. 50. And <laughs> you I bet you I get 60, I'm going to be doing the same thing. But I bet when you get 80, all right, when you get 80, you ain't dunking on Todd no more, man. <laughs> yeah. unless, unless it's a nerf Unless it's a nerf for him oh, He'll be dunking on me He'll be jumping off my wheelchair <laughs> Alright, alright Y'all have a good one Thank you, we appreciate you all right. Hey, you know what So, can we play this Because I want to hear this clip Right Because, you know this, Like, because Todd I got two questions Right First, are black people Still going to be rel Like, have we done our job Are we even relevant anymore In this election And then I'm going to tell you that I was thinking he should pick somebody like a black running mate for his campaign. But think when you talk about the age thing, I think that that running mate and who that running mate is a real factor. And white folks be looking around like, hold on, you want who to be in case? Because I do think that their age is a real factor. It's like I think, I, think so. I think people are trying to play it, and you know, with the ageism thing, you can't say it. But like, uh, seriously, the president has a lot to do and a lot of places to go. And you think about an eighty-year-old, and even on the best regimen, they they going to bed at like ten. <laughs> they I'm, better. They better. They got to be up at four. They got to be flying around, jet lag, all that stuff. Man, I'm telling you, and it's not like Senate. In the Senate. You could be 99.999 because yeah. nobody ever sees you. The president, you up every day. If right. you have a stumble, a gap, a anything, people are going to be all over you. But some of you play this because I think people need to hear this from Joe Biden. Cause I got it questions. has been reported that the administration is denying birthright citizenship to children of same-sex couples and may soon make it easier for adoption agencies to reject same-sex couples. Housing rules that are particularly egregious for so many LGBTQ youth rejected by their families, relying on shelters for survival. Maybe some of you were in that position when you were young, when a transgender American is literally under attack all across the nation, particularly transgender women of color denying access to life-saving health care, shelters, social services. We've already had five just this year, five black transgender women killed violently in 2019. It's outrageous. It must, it must, it must end. And the fastest way to end it is end the Trump administration. Because, folks, it's not only been, the Trump administration has not only been a disaster for human rights at home, but around the world. Just look at the ugliness, the anti-LGBTQ actions taken by this administration, challenges to the right to marry, barring transgender service members, removing Title IX protection for trans students. 28 states, as you know, you can still be fired for being gay. 30 states for being transgender. That's why we need the Equality Act that just passed the House. Uh, it goes on to say that that was his number one legislative priority. Hmm. Um, that it was that was his number one legislative priority, and even when you think about 
when he talked about black people, our viewpoint is being skewed through the eyes of the LGBT transgender community, which I do not think is representative. But think about how fluidly he was able to speak on that issue. How fluidly will he be able to speak on issues that impact regular black people? See, I, my concern with all of these things is that you recruit who you know, right? So if you don't know no black people, if the black people you, or the people you got recruiting are recruiting their friends, they're going to recruit gay people that are not necessarily. And so think about how high do you think that the transgender issue ranks as it relates to black issues? He said five black people were, five black transgenders were killed. How many were killed by police? Right. How many were killed by police? And I, I, I'm telling you, I already know black folks are voting for Joe Biden. But can I ask a question? Are black folks even relevant in this presidential election anymore? Have we already done our job and have they moved on? I can see it being that way. And, and I don't think we'll get a vice presidential pick because we've already done our job. It's Top Chicago 1690. We'll be back. More of The Morning Show with Mays Jackson coming up on The Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. We now, again, I'm not trying to be a, like... How high does the LGBTQ issues rank in the black community as far as our, our priorities? I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's very high, you know. Well, you know, black people tend to be tolerant, but they're not out uh, marching for uh, LGBTQ. At least I don't see it that way. So can I tell you what I think happens? What I think happens is, this is what I'm going to tell you I've seen. So, if you have an a LGBTQ campaign manager, right? And the LGBTQ campaign manager is going to recruit people that they know and associate with. So then what they do is they go get a black LGBTQ person to be on the team. And then the black LGBTQ person, because you got so limited few black people, becomes the voice of black people on the campaign. And so when the platform is created, they create the platform and they weave their issues all the way in and because the campaign manager is also of LGBTQ influence it's easy to push that but I'm just telling you who do you think black is really saying that transgender right like what's the percentage of black people that are transgender I just think I, I just like man and I don't think we're relevant anymore. I think black people have done their jobs. Now white folks are convinced that they could come on over to Biden. And so we're going to stick with them because we're going to roll the wave. But I think relevancy, I think you've lost your opportunity to really get something. Well, let me not say you've lost it, but I mean, I think it's pretty much baked. And now it's going to be focused on turnout, but they're going to focus turnout on not on tangible outcomes. They're going to focus it on boogeyman politics. Hmm. We're doing, yeah. Tell them what do to me. Free, <laughs> girlfriend. I'm gonna tell your boyfriend, yeah. Tell him. A look to stop and say then yeah so, so now 
long. Gonna have to tell him, girlfriend. Girlfriend of mine. Todd, you don't know nothing about that, Michael Jackson. I'm telling you, off the wall beats thriller. Sonia must listen to the show because I asked you yesterday. Did you know that song? Yeah, off the wall beats thriller. Because I've never, I, I, I don't know that song at all. What? Nope. So you was too busy listening to the Bee Gees. I'm telling you, man. Oh, My, no, don't 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 get it twisted. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Off friend. the wall, so off I, the wall beats thriller. I was an adult at that point. <laughs> no, I knew that album very well. Okay. Well, this, yeah, I see, man. Okay. All right, y'all. Stop Chicago, 1690 AM. Um, well, so, a couple things. Uh, Joe Biden said in Dallas, apparently, that at, when he was talking with Peach Buttigieg, Buttigieg, that the LGBT, passing LGBTQ community legislation would be his number one legislative priority as president. Now, I guess, Todd, the challenge for me is everything we've heard up to this point is Joe Biden could not be president if he doesn't get the African American vote and and black vote and the black vote delivered and it delivered to, it delivered and created what I call that momentum shift and that momentum shift is now convinced white folks that Joe Biden can win so now white women in the suburbs are coming on back home the donors are coming on back home. And guess what, Todd? Guess who's rose risen to the tip top of the priorities? Not the people who deliver for him. Hmm. Now I'm gonna ask you now that the now that in, in my estimation, uh, Bernie shot his best shot. His best shot was California. Right? And the California win did not lurch him forward. At this point, no, he didn't. Uh, he didn't just roll them over. He didn't roll them over, and quite frankly, Joe Biden now has more uh, delegates, right? Yeah. And it looks like going into the places like I mean, I think that Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders, you know, Bernie Sanders coming to Chicago this week. Yeah, I saw that to Grant Park, so he can go stomp on Obama's old grounds. <laughs> You think it's going to be millions of people out there crying and waving in the park? I think he's going to have a good crowd. I think he's going to have, because CTU and, and all of them are going to be out there, and all the socialists are going to be out there. But when it comes to the black ladies and the people that's voting, you know who, who Joe Biden's voter is? Who his number one target voter is? Uh, Letitia Public. 62-year-old black woman. Wow, 62-year-old. 60, and guess who's going to vote? Before a 62-year-old black woman is right. probably the highest, most likely person to vote in Cook County. Now, Todd, understanding that, can I ask, can I insert this question? What's in it for the black people? Mm -hmm. What is in it for the black people? And I'm saying now... That's when it, this, you talk about it now, actually. Well, you talk about it now coming into Illinois. Right? right? So it's coming in Illinois, and I'm going to tell you, like, think about this. How important is the black vote to Joe Biden? Still, is it important in Illinois? No, it's extremely important. Let me ask you a question. You think Joe Biden will come to the number one black radio station in the um, state of Illinois? Mm. <laughs> no, think about that. No, 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 think about that. I'm going to tell you. They're, the they're going to tell you that they need to be in Chicago, in Illinois. They're going to go, and let me tell you what they'll do. They'll stop by, you know, they'll go listen to the Bebop Hip the Hop Pop, and you know, he could back that thing up and do all that, but will he sit down and will he answer the question, what's in it for the black people? Or, he going to go where people are excited to see him, instead of asking the questions that black people want to know. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like, right now is our leverage. Right? And all the people that got them got to be like, man, bro, you got to deliver. Like, I'm going to tell you. Let me ask a question. I would guess that 
um, Joe Biden. Joe Biden's campaign in Illinois need to be the blackest of the black. And I'm not talking about just, you know, you got much street money. Who black is leaving this presidential? Who black is leaving here being propelled into the White House if he was to win? Right? Like, seriously. Because this is when it happens. Black. Let me go to the phone lines. Mona, you on the Talk Chicago, 1690. Hey, me, hey, Todd. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks for calling, so, Mona. I just want to say um, his allegiance apparently uh, is to the black black transgender com community because we apparently ain't getting nothing. Okay. And so, and we've already did the heavy lifting and still won't get nothing in return. Yet, decade after decade, black people tend to continue to vote Democratic. Now, for what reason? I have no idea. But clearly, we are loyal to a system that is no longer been loyal to us. If we think about what came out of this system, a 94 crime bill uh, under a Democratic president, we screwed. Because it don't look like we're going to get no legislation to help us. It looks like we're probably going to get something else to hurt us back, uh, from just like the 94 crime bill, which we let happen. And we still vote Democratic. Mm -hmm. I understand. So we just throwing up votes. The old people like, well, you know, he's bad. They don't mean nothing to me. I know his policies ain't black. That's what I do know, and I won't be voting for him. He will not get my vote. I'm a 40-year-old black woman that is educated. He will so, not get my vote. So, Mona, who you, who you talking about, Bernie? Bernie. But here's the thing. See, See but, but Bernie, Bernie, to first me... First of all... Go ahead. First of all, the DNC has underestimated the black vote. That's problem number one. They do it every year. This is 2016 all over again. They're going that's to it. assume... That we, we got to stop, stop you right there because I got to go to traffic news and the weather. <laughs> hey, I don't think Bernie is all all that. I think Bernie told you he ain't giving you no reparations. Bernie is the epitome of me to me of the white liberal that's going to do what's good for you even if it's, even if you don't think so. All his money has to go to uh, Medicare for all because <laughs> we ain't got no more. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll stop Chicago 1690. We'll be back. The station, 1690 AM, WVON. The I mean, Willie Wilson meeting with Biden doesn't mean anything to me. Willie Wilson thinks that reparations should belong to all people. All people need reparations. So, I mean, again, I'm not going to, I mean, I'm not getting leverage like that. I feel like that's usually, what usually, that's usually to me why do runs is so that he can demonstrate that he has black vote so he can leverage it. But what are the outcomes of it? Well, you know, it's like a lot of things, Mace. Uh, sometimes black people have to realize that I may, like in, in Wilson's case, he's rich. He's got rich black white friends. But is he able to gather the greater group of white people? No. They're, they're not looking at him. They don't see him as a viable candidate. And whatever reason that is. I mean, we know what the reason is. Well, we know. We know <laughs> what the reason is. And, yeah. and, the, and the moderate blacks who would, they don't see him as a viable candidate. Exactly. Now, he knows how to, he knows how to organize the masses. I don't think he has the institutional knowledge, though, to know how to actually leverage that. I totally agree. Because he has something. He just doesn't know how to make it work where he can exactly. become a true player. And yeah. to me, yeah. To me, Willie Wilson could have been a power broker, but he doesn't know. Um, I don't think he know like. I don't think he knows how to exercise his power, and I think that some of the people that he has leveraged it, but don't know how. Like I think it's. I just think like. I don't, so I don't want to care. Again, you, know, you have nine politicians. He of himself, you know, he always is giving money to politicians. So, at some point, he was like, well, why don't I run? Why am I spending money on other people? 
Well, sometimes it's smarter to put your faith behind other people. I think, you know, what you're doing would have been uh, the perfect thing for him, especially since he, you know, he's got a big old bank account. He create a pack or two where he makes a space in different uh, government bodies like, you know, the city and the state where there are people who work with him who yes, sir. are just like yes, we were just sir. saying earlier. You get five yes, people, they, they believe in your vision. Man, now you're powerful. Hello, Mr. Todd. Hello. What's up, brother? Mr. Mays, do you guys know each other? No. This is uh, Dalton Norris. Oh, hi. Todd. Todd. Pleasure, Todd. Same here. Maybe I've heard the name of many times. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Nice to meet you. Welcome. I, you know what? I was uh, on a bus trip yesterday with Greg. Oh, are uh, you? Right. Excellent. So, Excellent. Right. Excellent. So we're good. So we're going to put him. No, right we're, the, we're... Why don't you just scoot over a little bit, Todd, because I didn't set up the third camera. And we can keep everybody in the same shot. I'm going to have to destroy the studio. Pleasure to meet you, guys. You too. Todd, come back over just a little bit this way. Okay. This way. Yeah, I want to move this. Okay. So the, the um, conversation today is is about uh, economics in the community and how important small businesses are in neighborhoods. Uh -huh. I, I say that all the time. And that's what uh, I know. I think I read that in your blog. That's what we should be talking to uh, Biden about. Uh -huh. Really. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can I get you to scoot over just about a hat this way? So we're on Facebook Live. Oh. So we're on like all of that. The camera never goes off. You okay? <laughs> right? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, yesterday I was on the. Uh, Greg, when, me and Greg have known each other for some years and years and years and years, and we went down to downstate to work on a bill. And so on the way back, he was telling me that you were, because I was like, I don't know, I didn't, nobody told me, you know, I'm like, what? Who? What? I'm constantly, yeah. Nobody told and so he hollered at me yesterday, and so, because I was feeling, you know, but we all good. It's like, we're going to make it happen. And then he was just telling me about the positive things you was doing. I used to be the chief of staff over in 18. Um, when Lona no, got elected, yes. yeah, I got when Lona got elected. I, you know, why I remember Dan Soul Food is because Paul Stewart had a fundraiser there, okay. right? And I was like, "Who is this Dan Soul Food?" <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, so you've been over there for quite a bit, right? You've been over eight years. Wow. That's okay. <laughs> and you own? He was telling me you own all of that. The stores. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Twenty-five, twenty-three West. 79th Street. Tell me nothing. Um, right next to Mary Plow's state representative. Oh, okay. Does it open? <laughs> oh, so <laughs> when? <laughs> right, right, right. So when? So when does? Oh, I know where you are. Yeah. Yes. I had a frogs meeting there. That's right. <laughs> uh, on a regular. That's every yeah, morning. Yeah. As a matter of fact, this Saturday. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm painting <Pagan> too, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you, it runs in the family. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Pete. WVON, traffic and weather, now. Over in the inbound Dan Ryan, 95th to downtown. And you got a project that you're doing, right? Yes, yes sir. Okay, and where are you doing that project? Where well, first, we're looking to get tight control on 87th and Vincent, Auburn Gresham. Okay. That's where I grew up at. I went to Gresham Graham School. Okay. Mm -hmm. 69. Phone <laughs> 40 minutes.
You're listening to The Morning Show with Mays Jackson on the Talk of Chicago, You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Hey, Maze, did I ever tell you I went to a black tie affair? Who's a black affair? I mean, black folks. Mm -hmm. And South South. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was a comedian and a blues singer who was a woman. Mm -hmm. And they both were kind of blue. You know what blue humor is? You know what that is? Uh, when Sigmas tell jokes? <laughs> <laughs> no, more kind of uh, kind of sexual in nature. Oh, and, and a, a little the records I used to sneak and listen to when my parents went to work. Yeah, yeah, like the Moms Mabelys and them Red Foxes. Well, Moms Mabelys wasn't that blue, but but Red Fox was. Yeah, he was bluer than Sigma. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it did not go well with the crowd at all. The crowd just could not. They they weren't on board. What well, the comedian pretty much was like, "Hey, what's wrong with y'all?" Uh, cause you know, you was, cause you was at a black tie event, and that's when black folks gotta be extra. You know, they gotta be extra fancy. Like, you know, now they'd be laughing if they was at the crib. If you had chicken on the plate, like fried chicken, and they'd be all good. But the second, you know, when black folks get the dry chicken and the filet mignon on the white plate served by the Latinos, that the service, <laughs> they got to be like, uh -uh, excuse me, can I get the great great poupon? So you know, they not gonna rock with the. The black folks being black downtown when white folks is around. I didn't get it either. It uh, wasn't downtown. Oh, it was. It was at the uh, Dusable. Oh, yeah. I'm, t I'm telling you, that's when they're trying to be fancy, man. Got my good clothes on y'all around here talking that stuff. And I'm fancy all the time. <laughs> fancy all the time. You know what? Speaking of you being fancy all the time, uh, Cam Buckner sent me a picture of you sitting in your seat. Did I show that to you? Yes, that is... Uh, that is uh, I'm going to pull that up and I'm going to show it to everybody because I thought that was... Well, very know, every two years... They take a, a picture of the whole house, mm -hmm. and that was me sitting in my chair. Uh, that was the, that was like you almost look like you're in a high chair. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I wonder if Todd's feet touching the floor underneath that desk. <laughs> All right, I'm a small guy and I look really young. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well look y'all, it's the WVOA Morning Show. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. That's my co-host in the background, Todd Stroger. But y'all know how to do it at the top of the hour. Gotta say what's up to the WVON Morning Show team. What's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, as well as Miss Sonia Escobar. She is the musical conductor of the Soul Plane. Now, yo, check this out. You know that, y'all know I'm, oh, speaking of that, you know tonight, Illinois Minotti, 7 o'clock, Facebook Live, the Maze Jackson page. Um, mm -hmm. But you know that is a May said production, but it is also a Wiftaba production. If you don't know what Wiftaba is, that is what's in it for the black people. Uh, it's a question that I've been asked. I ask 
all of the time as part of my plan to rebuild the black infrastructure. Now, to me, the rebuilding of the black infrastructure is a multi-pronged strategy, Todd. You know, maybe I have to put the purpose up there so you can understand. Mm -hmm. But see, you got to understand that our goal is to, the infrastructure in our community consists of business, business. It undergirds kind of everything else. Politics. See, if you got your business in order, then you got a community that can help you provide the money to elect the politicians that represent your is interests. Mm -hmm. You got uh, you got education, right? So we got to be smart. We got to know what we're doing and thinking it out. Mm -hmm. uh, we got grassroots. You know what? So often we have been disconnected from our grassroots community, and so by being disconnected from our grassroots community, they take they execute war on internal instead of focusing their energy externally. Right. Right. So we gotta we gotta redirect that. Right. And then there is the spiritual component. Right. We have, in my mind, regardless of what form it takes for you, for black people to have survived this long under these circumstances, there has to be some spiritual connection to the creator, however you call it. I just that's just my conviction. But today we are going to talk about what I say undergirds the whole process. Because let, let me just tell you, if you ain't got no business, then the people ain't working. And the people ain't working, and they can't tie to go to the church, right? right? Or support the synagogue, or support the, right? If you have no business, then your warrior class is easily then bought by outside external forces, easily making them, making you the victim. When you talk about education, right, we're not paying. Our schools are underfunded. You know, I was talking to uh, John Cullerton, and John Cullerton was telling me that most of the reason the Northside schools do so well, public schools, is because they're, they farm a 501c3 for the school. And then the people contribute to the 501c3, and they then finance the extra activities so that they never short their children and their people get a write off for financing their own kids. So they instead of it, fund, instead of spending twelve thousand dollars a year for me to put my kid at Saint Rita, I can put twelve thousand dollars, write that off, and put it in my local public school, but it then con continues. So here today, you know, because I'm gonna tell y'all, you know when they call me and tell me I got a scheduled interview and I didn't schedule it, I was like, hold it. What? I get the getting all funny actor. I'd be like, hold on, this is my show. <laughs> but when I, you know, I was on a bus ride yesterday. And on the bus ride, one of my brothers, who I go way back, said, hey, man, you got one of the top black business people in the city that nobody knows about coming on your show tomorrow. Somebody got their phone on. Um, and so as we talked about it, and I started to realize that the own, that he was talking about the owner of Dan Soul Food. I was like, man, I've known him for, I done been to Dan Soul Food for 20 years. <laughs> and then when he told me, it's, I knew it was somebody. When, and then when he told me he owned the whole block, I said, this man was doing what Jay-Z was talking about before Jay-Z ever said it. Buy the block. Hey, y'all, here today to talk to us about black business and the importance of black business in our community is Brother Dolphine Norris. He is the owner of Dan's Soul Food at 2523 West 79th. He also happens to be, maybe Todd, he can do some, some management because, you know, he also ha he owns Dan's Soul Food, but he owns the block. He's also Mary Flowers' landlord. <laughs> don't laugh, don't laugh. I was I was gonna ask you, does that office ever open up? Let me stop. Uh, see, I, cause I look, there was a time I used to take pictures of that office every day, cause I was like, I, like I had three hundred years, three hundred days of the office doors never open, right? Just in a row. So, but anyway, I digress. I digress. Yeah, welcome to the morning show, uh, brother Dolphine Norris. Dolf, brother, how you want me to address you? Dolphin, how you want me to call you? you want me? Dolphin like in the water. Dolphin, what's up, brother? Hey, how you doing and welcome to the morning hey, show. Thank you so much for having me on Come closer show. to the mic. 
thank you for having me on the show. Man, I'm I'm thank happy you for here. being here. So talk to me a little bit about what's going on. We got, we, you know what, I got to go to break. I talked to your whole first break. But I want you to tell us what you're going to talk about when we come back. Okay. Tell us now. Uh, what's the economic condition? Talk, talk to the mic. What's the economic condition of our people and the solution? Uh-oh, and the solution. Hey, y'all, y'all know I ask the question, what's in it for the black people every day? Do well, <laughs> Dolphin got an answer. He got an answer. He's so excited to tell us about it. When he comes back, we're going to let you take it away. It's the Top of Chicago 1690. We'll be back. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming up oh, on the Talk of Chicago. Huh? You hit it all on the head. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> right, uh, bullseye. Are you working with uh, Alderman Brooklyn Thompson? I plan to on in Auburn Gresham. I don't know him personally. I've been working with Derek Curtis and Sir Roger Soy uh, personally. That's nice, but that's six and eighteen. Yeah, but his yeah. stuff is in yeah. eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. My, His my property that he owns is right. But he wants 87 cents and then cents. And I got to go to Brooklyn, right. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm working with the superintendent. He told me to <laughs> go see him. Yeah, he told me to go see him. But I don't want to. That's right. I just want to beat up Nate. Uh, and as soon as I can, in his move, dreams. As soon as I can move some of this uh, equipment, <laughs> I'm coming across. Coming, go get it. Go get it. That may take a little bit. Hey, but every since you brought out what's in it for the black people, that's my question every day. I mean, every day. Decisions are made. What's in it for us? What's in it for the black people? Really? Period. Every day. You know, but if it ain't in for us, it, then it's not relevant at all. That's what I'm talking about. Well, and you are a dinosaur. Yes, I am 64. No, what? No, not that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, you mean healthy eating and healthy right. living. Is that what that is? No, I was, yeah, I was, so I was talking more of, yeah. the, of, of the things that you own your block. And uh, not you own your block and you own uh, a store in it. So you decide what goes in and you take care of the space. Yes. It, it, you're, as I call it, you're like a... In our neighborhood, there's a lot of two flats and three flats. Yeah. You're, you're an owner occupied person. Yes. You live there and you take care of it. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. I do. I'm Michelle from Snow. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Dolphin, how long have you owned businesses? Uh, I've been owning businesses. I was shorted. I started my own business when I was. Congrats. Uh, see, 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 that's how I, that's my first business. Congrats and, 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 and shoveling and, and, and snow. And raking leaves. Oh, uh, man, I didn't get paid to rake leaves. That was just, that was part of the indentured servitude of being a Jackson. Oh, uh, you was raking your house. Right. I went, and I hated raking leaves, so I wasn't doing that. If the lawnmower didn't suck them up. Right, right. Oh, raking leaves was a good business. It was, especially for the next door neighbors and those that had a lot of trees. Yeah, <laughs> man. And you know what? The city trees. They had those big old, was it maple trees? With them big old. Big old leaves. The big old leaves. <laughs> Man, yeah. I, you know, I had the one year white experience of raking the leaves and jumping in the pile. Yeah. And after I got through itching for like three days, <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is there's for no the birds. <laughs> uh, no, there's no jumping in piles because you're trying to make money. So you're trying to hit all the neighbors you can. You got to keep moving. Yeah. A dollar goes a long way. And so, Dolphin, how many businesses do you own now? Four. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what's other one? Huh? I'm mostly a real estate developer. Really? I live in Texas also. My wife and my daughter are in Texas. What part of Texas? Arlington, Texas. I've been there 29 years now. Wow. Really? So what, you just come back and forth? Back and forth. How often? Often. <laughs> man, Arlington, Texas, man. That Jerry's world. world. I know where yeah, it is. Jerry's, Jerry's world, world, Jerry's world, baby. <laughs> Jerry's world. I'm, I'm trying to get... about 10 minutes away from What is that, like... That's the, the Cowboy. Dallas Cowboys Stadium, man. And, you, and the Texas Rangers Stadium, too. I, you know what? They do it big in Dallas. My wife is from um, Houston. Okay. But Houston. that Dallas, that I, so does he, is he a turkey leg, is he a turkey leg hut eater? You heard about turkey leg hut down there? No, I haven't. Oh, the turkey leg hut is the biggest thing in Houston right now. Mm -hmm. And then some black people moved down there and took a smoked turkey leg and turned it into oh, a yeah. most yes, oh, yes, yeah, turned into like a most yeah. look they done got the turkey leg hut now they got the parking lot they got a party in the line to go to the yeah. they sell you daiquiris all the way up to the door it's crazy wow excellent excellent woohoo yep we're back I was in this video did, did uh Leah, uh, send it to you. No, just put one on. Yeah. Not nah, Makia. If anything else comes on. Are they on? Can you hear? Check your your volume. Oh. Is, is, Show it, is it too loud or is it just right? It's fine. Okay. 
Would you like to ride? You can be with my friends. Get with me and my friends. In the sky. Todd, show him where he's looking for. The bike. Me and my friends. It's probably over here. Yeah, is that one over there? Oh, yes. You are tuned into Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co host, Torch Stroger Todd. Can you, can you good? All right, look, let me tell y'all what. We are right here. It's the morning show, and I got sitting in with me is Dolphin Norris. Dolphin is the owner of Dan's Soul Food, 2523 West 79th Street. That's right, right on the 9th. Uh, in the 18th Ward, shout out to Alderman Derek Curtis. And everybody in 18. Dolphin, my son talk can to walk over there and get something. Oh, you know what, my son? Shout out to all the St. Rita Mustangs. I'm going to tell yeah. them to come over there and get them a meal. Uh, Dan, so, t- oh, excuse me, not Dan. Dolphin, mm-hmm. talk to me, brother. Talk to me about your thoughts on the common welfare and your take on what's in it for the black people. Because you said you ask this question every day. Yes, I do. I ask that question every day. Being 64 years old, we were 64? Told, yes, sir. We were told when we grew up to go to school, get a good education, get a good job, assimilate, and integrate, and all will be well. Well, at 64, all is not well for our people. Mm-hmm. It's quite obvious. Anytime you can't uh, ha- harness but 2% of the income that we have, if, for instance, in Chicago, we represent a $50 billion cash cow. Boy, $50 million, you $50 said? $50 billion. With a B? B- B- With a B- billion. B- big old B. That in Chicago? In Chicago land area. Okay. We represent $50 billion, and we keep less than 2% of it. Then you wonder why our children are fighting for crimes. Right. Can you live off 2% of your income? No, not at all. Not very many people can, and that's no. what's happening in the state of the black community. We are keeping less than two cents on a dollar. Now, talk to me about this. So, um, you know, I feel like I do this regularly. Like, I poke holes. I'm like, look at this. I feel like part of my job is to illuminate situations that we don't even think about. Mm-hmm. But I'm looking at you, and you, not only did you ask the question, but you seem to have some answers. Yes. Talk to me about your thoughts on the answers to how do we re- recoup part of that fifty million? Now let me ask a question: What's realistic? So if we're not million, so if we're about fifty b- 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 billion, right? How much of that realistically is it? How much is realistic to keep in our in our community? Thirty cent on a dollar. You believe that out of that? You believe that? Black folks could circulate thirty billion dollars in the Chicago land area in they commu- in our own community. Well, thirty percent, sir. For instance, three times oh. five is fifteen. That's okay. a fifteen billion 15. dollar annual stimulus package that we can give ourselves without reaching out. Now, how, how, that sounds cool, but how? Um, well, first of all, let's let's start with the first thing on the agenda. Okay. Our common welfare must come first. Okay. When I say common, we've got to reach to the young people the middle-aged people, and the elders. Our common welfare must come first. We must teach the young to circulate their dollars among themselves. Teach the middle-aged to circulate their dollars among themselves. And the seniors, they won't do that. They do that anyway if they're given an opportunity. So that's the first step. Now, how, now tell me about the seniors, because I want to understand. How are the seniors doing it and not the other two generations? Well, the seniors, for instance, uh, our clientele at Dan Soko, we've got about 7,000 people in our database. 80% of them are seniors. Really? Yes, because they know that in the food gives us energy. Mm-hmm. And you got to eat food that's made with some love, not just somebody throwing you a meal with some lemon pepper on it and telling you it's all right. Uh-oh. 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 Now, I'm all, I got in trouble for talking about this because I maybe I, I, I use, I, I elongated my A. Instead of sh- so, I'm gonna use the short A, right? Because it seems like to me, Dan, I, I, I want to call you Dan because Dan's so like Dolphin, Dolphin, how did we lose the chicken and the fish and the front and the how did we lose all of that in our neighborhood? How is it that black folks was in the kitchen, came up, we was the cooks, the everything else, and now we don't even do that? I, I if I go to Soul Food now, you see a Ragib or somebody else behind the counter. And before you answer that, I went to the Frogs meeting and 
I would it, say that uh, I think everybody was older than me. It's maybe one person was younger, and I'm 57, so you're right. It was all the seniors. <laughs> yeah. So what is that? I mean. Well, it's once again that people we bought into a lot, and so you have to understand too. We've been socially engineered to be at the bottom of the food chain. By design, we've been socially engineered to be at the bottom of the food chain. So it's incumbent upon us to re-engineer ourselves to prosper. That's the first thing and foremost that we have to do. And it has a, a, a lot to do with a uh, simple quantum principle. It's Ujama, Ujama, however you want to calculate it. It's to build and own our own stores, shops, and other businesses. No, but, don't think, but most of all, but don't think we have to respect ourselves, or we don't, or each other, or we won't go. I, I think that just like we don't think enough of each other, it, and that's why we don't we don't interact. Well, that's part of our condition. See, we have to recondition ourselves. If I want to play ball, I have to practice playing ball. If I want to be a businessman, I got to practice being a businessman. If we want to practice trust, we got to practice trust. You know, so we have to get into a practice of things that are beneficial to us. We're always practicing how to hit these lyrics. Mm -hmm. We're always practicing different things, but we right. need to practice unity for the young, the middle aged, and the old. The young people don't have any respect for the elders because we're always hollering, what's wrong with the young folks? Mm -hmm. And ain't nothing wrong with the young folks. they conditioned by what we've done to them. It, where they're in the same condition they're in, not by their fault, but by ours, we have to literally take on responsibility and we're gonna be responsible this time. We're gonna reach back across generations. So let me let me go backwards because I wanna just get to the root of seniors real quick. Do you think that the reason that seniors are co understand that collective economics is because they experienced discrimination that they experienced when they had to shop in certain places? Because I do notice, like I do notice with older black folks, if there's, a, they kind of militant, mm -hmm. right? They kind of like, they walk around like, they will talk about some white folks without a doubt. And if I remember being on 87th Street when I had a store on 87th, and I do remember the thing that sustained me, even though I was selling new clothes, what, and you got on, I think that's, you got a Negro League jacket on, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so I had Negro League, I had okay. Fat Farm and everything else, and the kids would walk past me and go to the Arab, excuse me, the Arab store. Mm -hmm. And the seniors would come in and buy all of the Negro League gear, and that is what sustained me, even though it wasn't the hottest brand. But if I had a $800 jacket, here come Mr. Such and Such, come on down, walking slow. But let, let, let me see that jacket down here, put it on. And I, I think that there is something about our seniors not having the option. Right? Sometimes I think when your back is against the wall and you can't go shop at the white folks' stuff, mm -hmm. then you ha you're forced to succeed. It seems like now that we've given our people the option to shop everywhere, um, it seems like everybody else appreciates our money but us. Yeah, that's a very true fact. I mean, I'll give you an experience I had as a young man down I'm in a, Mississippi. I'm going to pause you right there because mm -hmm. I go to traffic, but remember that because that's where we're going to go yeah. right when we come back. It's Top Chicago 1690. Okay. Live from the WBON Newsroom, here's... You, um, so what made you go to Arlington? I was a third-generation railroader. I'm a third generation railroad. My grandfather retired from the railroad, my dad retired from the railroad, and I retired from the railroad. Really? And my whole family. We, Do you I know Delon Anderson? I ran away to college to keep from going to the railroad, and I ended up at the railroad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and the railroad was good to your family? Yes. Where did you uh, go to college? Uh, University of Wisconsin, Madison. I'm a bachelor. Boo! I'm gone. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. What happened? Say something wrong. Uh, you. He, he, you know, um, uh, Maze went to U of I. I'm lying. I'm lying. You're lying. trying to make us the kingfish right now. Hey, man, you know, they paid me to go to Wisconsin, and I didn't know because they didn't want me to play in Illinois, and then I didn't get no PT in Wisconsin. What did you play? I was QB, back in the 70s. Really? Yes, and they didn't give me no PT, no playing time, because I found out later they recruited me to take me to keep me going to Illinois. <laughs> That's part of the conditioning, right? So I went to, to Wisconsin for a yeah. couple of years. Did you? Madison? Madison. <laughs> So, I, I, I ma'am, actually love Madison. I, I'm, oh, I love really it. I'm gonna tell you, Party time, wasn't it? it is. It's surprising. Madison, quite frankly, 
um, in my estimation, has a. I feel like Madison was doing what Illinois tried to do later, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is recruiting a lot of black people. Because I think oh, yeah. about like Elsie and all of them mm -hmm. that were up there. Like Wisconsin has like a long standing Chicago pipeline, oh, right? Uh, all the way back to the early 60s. It's and 50s. a socialist state. Yeah. The only thing more socialist than them is Minnesota. No, no, no. It's not. The state is not socialist. Madison is socialist. Right. Madison is socialist. Right. Madison is socialist. Right. Yeah. Madison is socialist. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. My son goes to uh, Badger Camp really? every year. Okay. That's his first. Now, who's your friend? Who? Coach Howard. Howard Moore. Howard Moore. Right. He was they the one who just had them. Because uh, I didn't know. Yeah, the accident. Yes, yeah. so they talked about him, and uh, that's why they wear the shirts. Yeah. Because I, I saw the shirts, and I'm like, what's this more stuff they talk about? Uh huh. Well. Yeah, man, he was on his way from back from, uh, on his way to Detroit, and mm -hmm. they got hit on a head on crash, and his the wife got killed. Mm. His daughter, I think the daughter got killed too. Mm. Wife and daughter got killed, and they had just switched. Like she had pulled over and switched. It was a terrible story, tragic. Actually, Howard taught my Howard and Donnie Kirksey taught my son how to play basketball. My son, his love for basketball came because DK was like a coach at um, at UIC. Mm -hmm. So UIC got for for a kid this big. And you that's going it. and playing at college facilities, you sitting the right there, you in a locker right. room, you right. he like, oh, yeah, I got, I found his, garbage. yeah, I found his first video of him dribbling the first day when he learned how to dribble between his legs, and he is like this big, okay. standing out front of uh, ISU, I mean not ISU, uh, UIC, all but no, I think um, uh, he's fourteen. Okay, all right, that's what we gotta do. I love um, no, but I like Miss Con Wisconsin was my very first. Big Ten basketball game. Okay. I went to see Trent Jackson. I saw in Indiana play Wisconsin. It was Trent Jackson versus Jay Edwards. Mm. I saw Bobby Knight, and that was when they was playing in the little gym, okay. right? The little. So it was literally right. like, I. It was little like, like I was like, freaking three feet from Steve Yoder, right? Yeah, like yeah. it was that. It was epic. Wow. I mean, Steve Yoder. Man, Yoda. That name that was go way back, <laughs> I mean, I'm saying I was in high school. Right, 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 right. right. Trent Jackson, Danny Jones, they were the two. And Trent didn't. He went to. He went to. Because he was from Bolingbrook, uh -huh. and he was like a big star in Bolingbrook, and it was between him and Kenny Battle at U of I, uh -huh. and U of I took Kenny Battle, so he wound up going to. Wisconsin, and I was dating his his sister at the time, so it was like my first. And so you know, you went yeah. down there, and we was like, yeah, Camp Randall, baby. <laughs> it was not was that that that's the football, right? Yes, yeah, Camp definitely. Randall's but football. It's was next door to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Next door, right there. Now they got the new facility. Cool. I don't. They got a like they're building up the campus. Yes, pretty. All of them are. Yeah, that's man, you all of these campus, man, you will buy yeah. the dorm. I stayed in, they knocked it down and built a new one. Which one you stayed in? Ah, uh, celery. The celery? Yeah. Over over on the lake area? No, no, no. Uh, uh, so all this here, celery is right across. Oh, right across with the, the uh, well, not the street, but right yeah, across. It's not doing it. What years yeah. were you up there? Uh, eighty one, eighty two. I was gone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro. Jeff, you remember Jeff Mack, wide receiver, went to Fairgate. He's been up there for yeah. The son played up there too. Right there. No, Jeff I don't Mack. think I do. Huh? I used to run into. To West Matthews, basketball player, played with the Lakers. Okay. He 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 probably graduated in eighty. Okay. Yeah. Kenny Battle had major hops. He ain't had no jump shot though. No, that's that's what he had major hops and and a heart as big as his room. Right. Uh, I always say he was the engine for the flying Illini. Mm. Uh, the heartbeat. Yeah. Uh, man, and I then, like Nick Anderson was a skilled player. And then Kendall Gill was the most athletic of them all. I mean, yeah, he, he could just kind of do a little bit of everything. Hey, but you two guys you're on this show, you guys are the key. Y'all are a major key to turn this thing. You think? No, I don't think. There's not a thing. You guys can turn this thing around just by helping the influence behavior. Hmm. 
So I you, agree with you that, that uh, as Mace was saying earlier, Mace was down the street. Yeah. And basically what he said was people were listening because they knew he was coming. <laughs> That's because people were preparing. Right. Yeah. And they was like, yo, like I think if black people could see themselves as a force instead of a victim. That's the biggest problem. But we're not yes. victims now anymore. We're volunteers at this point. Bam. Yeah. You, gotta, you, gotta <laughs> you gotta say that. You gotta say that. Okay, we're back. Boy, if you saw him do this, if you see Charlie Wilson do this live, he puts on an electric suit and they start doing the train like this. Oh, it's crazy. Mm. <laughs> I love to see that. You know, now that I think about it, celery may not have been built when you were there because all gets older. At least they probably knocked that down to <laughs> Right, right. But all, they built a new Ain't nobody paying right attention to us. And, and Witty, because I think Witty looks the same style. Okay. So maybe that's what, well, when I was there, that's where all the, the black people were. I was like, hey, yeah, yeah. is that where y'all were? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you think, oh, I gotta go up there. Oh, I probably gotta knock down the You are tuned in to Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co host, Todd Stroger. But let me tell y'all what. We got Dolphin Norris in the building. Dolphin is the owner of Dan Soul Food, 2523 West 79th Street. Man, you better go in there and get y'all some of that soul food. Because you know they say they need the food prepared with love. But, Dolphin, before we no, went wait, to... we're from Chicago. Where'd you go to high school? Calumet High School. Okay. That's high school? Where's yeah. that at? Uh, 81st to uh, Racine. Oh, okay, okay. He being silly. He used to live making. <laughs> <laughs> It's not Bolingbrook, so you know I'd be like, right, right. you know, and now my heart. Wait, how they say my heart, and my money go to Saint Rita, yes. uh, to the Mustangs. But let me tell you what, Dan Soul Food has is speaking of Saint Rita's. Dan Soul Food is right within eye shot yep. of Saint Rita. All the Saint Rita Mustangs, y'all need to head over there. We're gonna have to put us a Saint Rita special together. We're gonna start making the black guys come over there yep. and start, you know, and instead of them running over to the get them some fr some salt and pepper, lemon pepper. We're going to have them start walking across the street. They're going to watch this. We're going to make that work. But, Dolphin, you were talking about no, Mississippi. Wait, you know it's important that people know that Dolphin and I have a, a link to the University of Wisconsin. Todd, see, now, now let me tell you. See, Todd is, let me tell you. Though. No, he is, but let me tell you about Todd. See, the thing is, Todd be trying to claim was, see, he a flip-flopper. Yeah. See, he a flip-flopper, because now he's trying to claim Wisconsin. Now, let somebody come in from the HBCU, he'll switch his shirt up, be like, I went to XU, the school behind the billboard. XU, Russell. They don't even got a football team. Yeah. All right, but <laughs> Dolphin, man, before we went to break, you were telling us about something in Mississippi uh, that was happening. You said we're conditioned. Talk to me about Mississippi. Well, yeah, we've been conditioned. I remember as a child, Coming up, I jumped. We, I had to milk cows. We milked cows. We went down south every summer. Mom took the, uh, the three boys. I jumped off the barn, stepped on the nail. They took us uptown. Well, I went to go walk into the doctor's office. He said, well, you couldn't go in there. You can't go in there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why can't you go in there? You can't you read that sign? It says whites only. And it was. I looked in, and it was a nice, clean breaking there. Like everything was new. And I had to go to a, the further back down the hall. And I went to this hall, it says colors only, and it was dirty and ragged, mm -hmm. and nasty. But we went to see the same white doctor, two different places. So separate I, but unequal. Separate but definitely ain't close to equal. Mm -hmm. Now those were back in the 60s, but now in the year 2020, we are no longer the victims. We are volunteers in our conditioning now. It boils down to us changing our behavior. Now, see, that... That's not fun. That ain't no fun. I mean, there's no app for that. Like, there's no app to make us be responsible to ourselves and to our ourselves. Like, I, I, I mean, I feel like all they got to do is roll a piece of meat out, and they can have all the black people fighting. Uh, Dolphin, 
how do we break this cycle of condition? Uh, first thing you brought up, the, the, the solution is spiritual in nature. Okay. We have to have self-respect, self-respect. We got to be thoughtful. We have to have an entrepreneurial spirit. We must be accountable and be calm in what we do and be mindful of who we really are because everybody knows who the black people in America are except us. Mm -hmm. We're the hybrids of the planet. We're mixed with red, yellow, white, and of course African and black is dominant. Right. So we are the high region. Everything we do, we excel in it from whether it be sports or education or science. We excel, and it's our turn. So why is it that it seems like when we excel, we, I mean, it's like I feel like if you get black people focused on anything, they will kick your butt in. I'm serious. That's like, you think about it. Swimming, golf, uh, even if you don't want to acknowledge your deep down in you, it, once you, once black folks figure it out, it's going to be a black master. That's right. How do we get to that place where we can master? Talk to me about how do we, let's back up, because I want to go back to the collective economics. Yes, sir. Talk to me about how do we build collective economics in our community from a person that's actually got a business. Well, you know, and I'll tell you this. Here's the reality we must look at. The global workforce is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's going to have to be a collective wealth in order for things to happen. We have to have community-owned businesses. I'm okay as a business person, several individuals. There's going to always be people that excel in the business. Mm -hmm. Well, we, that's not going to help the whole. The classic example, remember they were throwing Walmart, uh, Walgreens up everywhere we went in the black community. They was everywhere. Everywhere. But then all of a sudden they were paying those jobs, $10, $15 an hour jobs. But where did the profit go? Right. Went right back out of the community. Right. So it's oftentimes what happens, even with our own black people, we make all the money in the community, but we take the profit out of the community. The key is taking the profit, bringing it back into the community. That's where it comes down to collective ownership. For instance, Chicago represents 77 communities. 29 of them are predominantly us. So how, how is it that 29 of the communities predominantly are us? Chicago, West South Chicago, we own the dealerships. Right, I remember Al Johnson Cadillac. Yeah, absolutely. But what, I mean, so again, I feel like, how do we get that back? Because you ain't going to, first of all, how do we get the, let's start there, because I realize that Al Johnson Cadillac is, that's, that's, that's aspiration. I'm going to say like this, I know black people can fry chicken and fish. I know black people can take pictures. I know black people can put together a little corner store and make it work. I mean, because y'all walk into the corner store for the other communities and buy everything they got. And if I got all the flavors of blunts, I could stay alive just off of that. That's right. How come we can't do that? No, we, and we can't and we will. Just look at the first example. I'm going to shout out to uh, Alderman Brookings in, uh, in Auburn Gresham area. We're looking at the 87th Street uh, Benson's line. Just want you to bring heads up on that. We can put a 36,700 square foot building on that as a market center. And it can be a community owned center where the revenue, the jobs are employed there for those in Auburn Gresham, as well as the profit staying in there. First thing, put a drive-through, sit down, carry out cafe, that's your food, a grocery store that can deliver fast food, which is what Amazon is doing now, a wellness center because our people got the highest rate of diseases because we're eating everybody else's food except our own, and then put a financial institution of some kind in there as well. Now, Dolphin, this is my question, though, because then when you do it, how do you do it and sustain it? Because this is what typically happens. I think there's a lot of great ideas like mm -hmm. this. But then once the capital starts to run short, then you, you know how I tell a good business or not a business is how many different soap dispensers they got. Right? Because, you know, everybody starts with the, the silver soap dispenser right. that they, when they got all the money, then it goes from the silver one to the plastic one. Then it goes from the plastic one to the one that's sitting on the sink that you pump your hand on. How do we get these businesses and sustain them? Because the challenge is, it seems like if you do open up a black business, you got to take less than in the service place. Well, actually, uh, Mary, it's the collective ownership is the key. If you got a, for instance, if you got a cafe or a business that sells food, where you gonna eat at? Where you gonna eat at personally if you own it? At that cafe? If you got a grocery store and you own it, where are you getting your groceries from? My grocery store. If you got a wellness center, where are you going to go to get your health taken care of? Man. You got a gym, where are you going? You got a recording studio, where are you going to do record at? So These are things that must be done collectively. Now, when we come back, 
I'm going to just ask you, because you, you read the Willie Lynch letter. Yes, sir. Right. And so how do we overcome the Willie Lynch syndrome in our community to build something collective? Because it seems like anytime somebody start to get a little bit or try to pull it together, then somebody be like, remember 20,000 years ago when your mama said? And then you, you, you going backwards instead of forward. Let's talk about it when we come back. Absolutely. More of The Morning Show with Mays Jackson coming up on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. You know, I did live on the, uh, the lakefront uh, one summer when I was in the summer program. Balling. That was different. Yeah, that was big time. You mean in Wisconsin? <laughs> oh, yeah, with the athletes stay on the lake. Yeah. Look, look, he like, uh, right. yes. We, right. we, <laughs> we, look, you stay on the lake with the white women. Look, you stay on the lake. They put him with the white women. Yeah. They be like, yeah, look. Crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not good. Look. Yeah. <laughs> they be yeah, like, man, y'all it, fellas, it, it stay from crazy. over there in the yeah. dark dorm. You come on over here, and then look, they sort through. <laughs> And they start to figure out which ones is gonna be the ones that's, that's right. really going somewhere. And, they need to and then they lock right. them down. Right, yeah. then they lock as them down. Matter, as a matter of fact, coaches, when they found out that we were the white girls all over, the first thing they started doing was getting those apartments off campus. <laughs> that's how they broke okay, it up. Here we go. Yeah. 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 Getting those yeah. apartments off campus. Yeah. Well, at U of I, they all had, like, them guys had apartments off campus. With Ryan. But they had chickens. They no, they at the white the campus off the campus. Once they got off campus, the white chicks was like, "I can be your maid." And yeah, that's right. You go do, man. Please, the stuff I used to see at U of Remember, I was there during the blazer era. Okay. Right. All them dudes, they they all had blazers. It was like you used to be at U of I. It was like straight up. Blazer city. Huh? Not just blazers though. I'm saying like, you know, that was during the yeah. cash is king, baby. Mm. And then stinking ass Bruce Pearl blew it for everybody. Mm. <laughs> you know, my, I, I my, my daughter goes to my daughter went to UT down in Texas in Austin, uh -huh. and the football team basketball the big school. team. Yeah, the big school. She yeah. graduated there, and uh, all the athletes man drive Escalades. <laughs> There's a lot of money in Texas. <laughs> Escalades. They, they, the dealership leases them out to the athletes through the department, some kind of way where they write it all off, but they drive Escalades. That's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Hey, man, I, let me tell you. If I could be an athlete in any state, Texas is we'll be the one. Because <laughs> Texas, they'd be like, go big or go home. Yeah. Boy, yeah. we got this oil money. Remember when yeah. T. Boone Pickens was like, Oklahoma State is going to be a team that is going to be formidable. I made billions in oil, so I'm, make, I'm paying for my team to be. That's what I'm going to pay for. I'm going to buy them. Yes, yes. This, yes. That's what happened with the Pony Express and the SMU. Woo! It just got caught. Yeah, SMU got busted. But <laughs> that was when they got the death penalty. There you go. No, who used to play with the Bears? Who went to SMU? What's his name? Uh, uh, the linebacker, middle linebacker. What's his name? Singletary. He went to Baylor. No, he went to no, he Baylor. Went to, he, got, he got his PhD from Baylor. No, he no, went no, to he Baylor. Went to yeah, he, okay. he got drafted he got out of Baylor. Out of Baylor, he did. Yeah, yeah. He did. He did. But I, I remember SMU was doing that time when SMU got busted. I just think all of Pony stuff. Express. All I think of is Eric Dickinson, man. Eric Dickinson. That dude, right. man. A beast. Yeah. A beast. My goodness, yes. What are we picking up at? Where are we picking up? Uh, well, we're about to wrap. Right. So I'm going to let you. So how do we get through the, how do we get to collective? Okay. Like how do we buy, how do you get over the hump of black people not working collectively yeah. to try and do this? You like, we own it, but it's like the second you put some money in, black folks, how do we get to collective yeah. ownership? I talk yeah. about this all the time. That's a legal matter, but we'll get there. Yes, yeah, telling people you need a certain amount of money, but this money has to be able to stay there. Yeah, yeah. You can't come back and say, well, I need it tomorrow. No. But see, the problem is most of our investors come from that, that style, yeah. right? And they yeah. most of the guys, yeah. they got cash, dough guys, yeah. so they don't understand investments. Yeah. Well, they want their money back a, right away. They'll get a rate return, but the re profit will stay in the community. Right. That's the bottom line. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Tawaj Stroger. Todd, we are talking to Dolphin Norris. He's the owner of Dan Soul Food, 2523 West 79th. Hey, y'all, make sure y'all stop in there and get y'all something to eat. Represent. Uh, you can get better than just lemon pepper on everything. You can do better than that. Dan Soul Food. Uh, over in the 18th Ward. Shout out to the Rita Mustangs. Y'all better go over there and get y'all some good food. 
We might have to have a team meal or something over there. Six dollar holler. Six dollar hollers. Uh, look, Sonya said, "What time are you open?" Because what time? What are the hours over at Dan's? It opens from ten thirty every day until eight o'clock every day. Oh dang! You know what? I'm gonna have to stop on over there after the game and go pick up something. You know, we probably gonna stop in on Friday night. Um, hey, but Dolphin. You were talking about collective economics because you gave Alderman Brookings a shout out. You are looking to do something, build a collective uh, cent a center for collective economics right at 87th and Vincennes. I know that spot because that's where the cool mural is and yes. the diagonal when you're trying to yes. cut around. Uh, when you're trying to cut around 87th Street and beat the traffic. So I know exactly what you're talking about. But I, I, when you talk about collective economics, man, I done worked with some black folks before, man. And you know black folks... Once one person get to going, somebody else be like, remember that time 30 years ago when your mama had said? And then they want to start a fight, not fight, but start t tearing you down. How do you get over the Willie Lynch syndrome in the black community to start to build collective economics? Well, that's a good question, and the uh, uh, answer's already been made. It's, it's a phenomenon that's going to happen, which is occurring now. It's enough of us have woken up. It's a critical mass has been reached. Enough of us know that enough is enough. We don't, everybody's not going to get it, but there's enough of us that know what time it is, and it's time to circulate our dollars among ourselves. One of the two finger rules that we have to apply is the dollar and the vote. We, I heard you guys talk about the vote earlier today, mm -hmm. so that's the local, the county, the state, and the federal, but the first thing first must be the dollar. We must circulate 30 cents on a dollar among ourselves. That's all toilet paper, toothpaste, soap, deodorant, hair care product, things like that that we already do on a small scale, divided. All we have to do is make a conscious effort to find out who has it. Mm -hmm. So now what I want to know is, Dan, so, I mean, get Dash, that's, that's Diamond. Dolphin, how do we start? How do we start the process? Like, how do I get started? Right in each community. Each take ownership of where you live. That's where the boundaries are, landmass. If you live in Auburn Gresham, work in Auburn Gresham. If you live in Ashburn, work in Ashburn. Whatever community, that's one thing that they does have not changed since 1920. The area and the boundaries for each community is stagnant. It doesn't change. The automatic or the wards change every 10 years and they're about to change again. So there's gonna be some movement around, but the community does not change. Put your footprint. Matter of fact, you can go on to your email and send an email to shy, C H I 75 uh, at A A I I. And just send them your name, your phone number, and your address. Well, not even your address, just the name, your phone number of the city you live in, and the, uh, uh, the community and the war. We agree in a database. Our objective is to have 500 in each community and we will mobilize. Hey, I heard that, man. So uh, that's something I want to be a part of because that's something that seems like that is definitely answering the question, what's in it for the black people. Um, telling you, I'm going to give you about a, one more minute to close. If you got anything else you want to share with the people. Yeah, I want to give a freedom uh, uh, formula. Go ahead. Yeah. The freedom formula is, is two things. Build where you live, grow what you eat, manufacture what you consume, and buy where you own. That ends dependency completely. When you say build where you live, that's vocational training. We need to learn to be electricians, plumbers, HVAC people, carpenters, uh, drywallers, etc. Grow what you eat. Grow, plant something that you like. Whether it be a tomato or something, you'll see the difference. Grow what you eat because we're being poisoned by design with all the garbage we have. Manufacture what you consume. Toilet paper, toothpaste, soap, deodorant, hair care product, cleaning supplies. These are the type of things that we're already doing on a small scale, but yet divided. Find out who is doing it, tie in with it, and then most importantly, buy where you own. I own stocks in a lot of major companies because I buy from them. Mm -hmm. And so we have to have the same thing. We must buy where we own. That is the entrepreneurial spirit. That is what built us as a people. Hey, yo, uh, that is Dolphin Norris. Dolphin, I'm going to tell you, you came in here. I try to call myself motivating people, but you have motivated and inspired me this morning. Um, and I'm going to tell you, we want to be involved with that. Shout out to my man, Big Greg D, who, uh, you know, yesterday we was on the bus and he was like, man, my man Dolphin is coming tomorrow. I'm just telling you. And I was feeling all kind of funny. I'm like, what you telling me I got to interview somebody? What you mean? Then they was like, he's he like, man, you talk to this brother. He's super sharp, collective economics. And he like, he tuned in to, he got, he want to be with what's in for the black people. And I was like, wait, what? 
then you see my attitude changed around. And I'm going to tell you, um, I am grateful that you were able to come in today. And I'm, you know what? We got to have you come back because that's one of the things that we can do. We can start pushing that. Like, I was just thinking, hey, babe, we need to make a list of all the black-owned businesses in our in our neighborhood. Hey, Alderman, we need a list of all the black-owned businesses in 27th Ward. Hey, Alderman, we need a list of all the businesses, black-owned businesses in every one of y'all wards. Mm -hmm. And let's share, the, let's share it with ourselves. We ain't got to be against nobody. Right. You ain't got to be against nobody. Shout out to my man. Oh, y'all know we got elections coming up, right? Yes, so, Todd, you know the most important races, right? Which one? Judge. Hey, you know what? You know what? You So, judge. Judge, 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 judge. Mm -hmm. Black people are going to see more judges than they are going to see uh, the governor. You will see a judge, talk to a judge, be impacted by a judge before you see the governor. Did I tell you yesterday I was in, in uh, the building we went by the governor's office and um, I seen the chief of staff and she was like, move fast, walk fast, walk fast, walk fast. <laughs> All right. You know, because there's a lot of people that, you know, you be seeing them, they be like, so check yeah. this out. I want to encourage you all to make sure you pick up the What's In It For The Black People Voters Guide. Mm -hmm. You know what? Can we get some of those over? Can I drop Absolutely. some of those off? Absolutely. And can I tell you what? When is the best time? When are the most seniors in your building, in your place? They're, Sunday. They're in there all day long, but Sunday is packed. You got to come on in there early. So I'm going to tell you, maybe Sunday, people like Tom Condon. Tom Condon, I got Tom Condon in the third uh, sub-circuit. Sub he probably need to go over there and... Uh, Go shake some hands, meet some of the people. Some of you people that are running and running for office, you need to go support black business. And can I tell y'all something? Let me tell all y'all politicians something real quick. Stop calling the black businesses up asking them for some free food. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Like, that's collective economics. Y'all okay. know y'all got all these white lobbyists and all these people with expense accounts. And then you call, they, when they take you to Gibson's, you don't ask them for nothing free. No. You go to Gibson's, you be like, man, but man, make them people with them expenses accounts come on over and spend some in our neighborhood. Because you know you'll go to Nordstrom's without a second thought. And we got a $6 holler that will break you in half on the good way. $6 holler. I think I'm going to make Tom Condon buy, buy, buy about 10 $6 hollers on Sunday. I'm going to start. This is what we're going to do, right? We're going to be like, when these people want our vote, we're going to start telling them to meet us at a black business. And we're going to have them sit at the black business, and they're going to support the black business. Look, man, we got to use the sticks we got to build each other up. All right? Hey, uh, Dolphin. Thank you. I'm going to tell you, man. I, when I saw your name as Dolphin, I was going to act funny, too, because I thought you might have went to Whitney Young. Right? You know, the Whitney Young fish. Whitney Young fish. Uh, but shout out to Bolingbrook Raider uh, ladies uh, basketball team. Shout out to everybody. This has been an awesome, awesome time. Also, I want to send a big shout out to Felicia Simmons Stovall. She is running the second sub circuit. Send a shout out to my girl Kim Fox. Y'all, we got to get out here and support Kim Fox because they are trying to set it all backwards. Now, for Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, for Sonia Escobar, she is the musical conductor of the Soul Plane. For my man Dolphin Norris, Collective Black Economics. And for Todd Stroger, he's my co-host. I am the host of the WVON Morning I Show. Asking, <laughs> asking every day what's in it for the black people. And if you don't like it, you can still tell them. May said we out of here. Peace. Yeah, hey, but keep keep those sheets. That's the format. That we I'm gonna got. keep it. Yeah, Definitely. That we, this is how we're gonna make it happen. And it's, man, I'm looking not so much at us as much, but I'm looking at your son's grandchildren's grandchildren.